Good evening and welcome along to finals night here at the Moda Super Series at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Over the last five days, 12 players have battled it out in order to book their spot in tonight's action. Chris Landman was the first player to book his spot here at finals night. I'm delighted to be joined by Paul Nicholson, Scott Mitchell as well. Scott, we're going to start with you. Chris Landman was the first player to book his spot in finals night. He wasn't at his blistering best throughout that group a campaign but we know he has that level in his locker he came good towards the end of the group and and the last game with the group was an absolute burner for him because he had to win it to make sure he got a couple of days off yeah and it was interesting wasn't it nico when we spoke to david davis yesterday he was saying that it did play on his mind that he'd missed out again on legs difference i think it says a lot about him that he has been uh, very close to qualifying before in a group scenario and a weekly scenario but this time he was able to get through a little bit later in the week. Just goes to show that he's got some resilience in his locker. Yeah, Chris Landman took out a lovely tops, tops finish as well in that campaign. Really, really solid. But he is going to need to up that level. We can have a little look at how the Group A table finished up. Jenks and Klaassen, of course, they missed out somewhat. Jenks was pretty good in that Group A campaign. We did have a little whisper, didn't we, that he was back. He showed that at times not consistently enough. David Davis confirmation there that he missed out on legs difference again. He went into Group B with Jenks Yella Klaassen. Johan van Velzen and Robin Bega went into Group C. As I mentioned, Chris Landman did take out a lovely tops, tops finish in that campaign. It was really interesting as well, wasn't it? Because he lost his opening two games of the group and we were wondering where his game was at. But the way he was able to recompose to win his final three games on that Monday, it says a lot about him. And they were two tough games as well. I think it was Klassen and Davies, and, and they turned out to be his main opponents in that group. So although we were looking at it as a bit shocked, for me, I thought he was going to come good because they were two tough games to open up with. Yeah, and now we can move on to the Group B table and see how that finished up. It was Fallon Sherrick with a really stunning performance in her final game last night, a 103.66 average in order to confirm her place at the top of the league standings. How impressed were you? Very impressed. When you consider that we've had some really good individual performances this week and people have gone over that 100 mark, we waited until the very last game of qualifying to get the best performance of the week. And you have to say that was some sort of statement from Fallon to the rest of the field tonight saying, I've just had the best game. You're going to have to bring your best on Saturday night to take me out. But she didn't have to get those two points. She was already qualified. But by getting that performance in there and winning by four legs to nil, she won the group. Yeah, and one of the most important moments in that Group B campaign was her 1-4-4 finish against David Davis. We can see it here now. It was at such a crucial moment in that match, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. You consider that David's on 75. He's looking to hold. And when you get those big finishes to break as well, it just breaks your opponent's spirit just a little bit. Ultimately, David would get his revenge the following day. But I like the tussles between those two. It showed me that they like playing against each other. I wonder if they're going to play again tonight. And Scott, would you say it's fair to say that we've seen a level this week from David Davis that we hadn't previously seen here, and it's really exciting to see what he can produce tonight? What I like about him is he never looks to be troubled. He comes up here, he seems... He looks like Mr. Cool, like we said in, in commentary this week. He's probably like a swan and, and he's pedalling inside. But the thing is, he's just... Every time he's been asked a question... He's answered it himself, and he's done it himself without too much fuss, without too much bother. And that's what impressed me most about him. Absolutely. And then in Group C, it was Klaassen and Crabtree who came through that one. Yellow Klaassen getting the better of Cam in the final game in order to seal his position on legs difference at the top of the league standings. Yellow Klaassen admitted himself when we spoke to him that he sometimes loses focus. That's why we've not seen the best of him yet. Do you expect him to up that level tonight? I'd like to think so for his, his sake tonight. He'd like to be a two-time weekly champion here. He does have the experience of doing it, but I like the, the, the candid approach from Yella that he was so honest about why his performances weren't to the level that we would probably expect from him and he would expect from himself. But to say that out loud is strong because it actually reminds him of what he needs to do by the end of the week to walk away with the trophy once again. Yeah, some really clinical finishing from him throughout that Group C campaign. The 1-1-4 checkout, which sealed his position in finals night, that victory over Stu Wilson. Scott, that was one of the most impressive aspects of 
of his game, wasn't it, the finishing? Yeah, it was. He, he, he struggled with it at the start of the week, and that's probably why he didn't find himself going through in Group A. He really didn't push at all there. He, what he's done, he's been a slow burner, and he's got better as the week's gone on. We're at Saturday. There's no time to be better than tonight. Absolutely. Let's have confirmation then of all six players who are going to be playing for that £5,000 prize this evening. It's not a bad lineup, is it? And there's a real vast experience in this lineup of playing at finals night. David Davis, of course, a debutant here on a Saturday night, but the other five have so much experience of this. Yes, they do. And that's why we expect from this group. I think David can almost take the pressure off himself tonight. This is another experience builder for him, but we do expect from the others. Let's face it. But then again, we've got to say for David that Mark Webster really does expect from him. He's been tweeting about him this morning saying, go on, David, you can do this. I wouldn't be surprised if he did, actually. Yeah, and David plays with a webby dart as well, so a lot of pressure on him. Maybe surprising that he's taken out so many big finishes. Sorry, Webby. But let's have a look then at the groups these players go into for this evening's action. Group one, Chris Landman, Cam Crabtree and David Davis. But that group two, Scott, when you look at that, Yella Klaassen, Fallon Sherrick and Lucas Vanig, you wouldn't want to be in that one, would you? No, I wouldn't. Definitely not. And that is a uh, very nice kind of you to say. But um, yeah, I, I think that that is going to be you. It's going to flip a coin on that one. You really can't pick them. It's going to be who holds their nerve when it comes to hitting those finishes. I think with that second group, you've got three people who have won a weekly title with us, whether it's in Southampton or here. Two of them have been here. And Yella Klassen is obviously going to go in with the most experience. But... I just think that Group 2 is one of the strongest we've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. Let's have a look then at how the bookies see this evening's action going. This is for the outright winner, Chris Landman, the favourite at 12-5. to 5. David Davis, 17-2. to 2. Does that surprise you slightly? Yes, it does, actually. When you look at Fallon Sherrick at 5-1 to 1 as well, considering she's had the best individual game of the week, and she did win Group B as well, I think that's a mark of just how close tonight is because people who you could fancy to make it through to the final are outsiders with the odds compilers. Yeah, really interesting to see Fallon Sherrick underestimated again because going into the second session in Group B, she wasn't the favourite to top the group. It was still Lucas Vanig, despite what Fallon Sherrick had produced on the Thursday. But it's nice to see she hasn't got that weight of expectation on her shoulders. No, absolutely not. And if I was a betting man, those are the two value bets tonight, yeah. Davison and... And Fallon for sure. Yeah, let's have a look then at the bet builder for this evening's action. We're going to put that on the screen now. Sherrick against Vanig over 2.5 at 11 to 8. You're not, you're not looking confident, Paul. Do you know what? I actually look at that for a second time and I think some of the games that Sherrick's had, she's had a barrage of 180s and Vanig's had a few as well. So to get three or more in that one at 11 to 8, I think that's pretty good actually. And would you agree with Davis coming out on top in that fixture between Crabtree and the Welshman? I think so. I think that Davis will just hold his nerve and go about his business. We're at a stage now where we're not thinking about averages. I think he's just going to go up there and do the job and get his four legs. Yeah, let's have a look then at tonight's fixtures. We're really keen to get the action underway here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Group 1, Chris Landman and Cam Crabtree. That could be a really crucial match, especially when you take into consideration how slowly Landman started in each of his three days of Group A action. It's an intricate format on a Saturday night when you think about the Group A winner, plays in the very first game, but will have to wait a little while to play again. And... I just get the feeling that Saturday night suits some people and it doesn't suit others. I think these rat-a-tat play, rat -tat players that we do have, sometimes they want to play concurrently and they don't want to have these big gaps. So whatever your schedule is tonight, you've got to be okay with it, otherwise you'll find yourself behind very quickly. And just finally, when we spoke to Lucas Veinig last night, he was saying there were a few things he needed to work on, didn't want to give away what they were. What do you think they'll be? I just think it's mental with Lucas. I think he's got a lot of things in his locker that he doesn't want to let go and I think there's a lot of players like that they will say things that are their strengths but they won't give everything away it's like being a darts coach you want to teach them everything it makes them a good dart player but sometimes you have to keep a few, th few things in reserve just quickly from you both your week nine winners Scott do you want to go first I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Lamb and if he has a good start if he has a good start I think he's scoring power, it, it'll be difficult to peg out back I think Sherrick might be the outsider tonight. Five to one for her. I think that's ludicrous. If you fancy a bit of value, I think Sherrick is uh, the one to get the first ladies win here under this roof. Right then, before we get the action underway, let's hear now from Landman and Crabtree. 
huge congratulations here at the Super Series. A Group A winner. It went to the wire. How did that feel to play in that deciding game? Yeah, it was tough. Yeah, I didn't think I played my best game all all days. I think yeah, I lost the first rounds every day, but. Yeah, there were good games and there were bad games, but up and down. And I know I had to win the last game, and luckily the last game it felt, yeah, played very well. The way Group A was going, did the practice room have that feel as if that last game was going to be the shootout? Yeah, at the moment, uh, we, yeah, we all see that, yeah, that it's come to me, me and Davis. And yeah, yeah. We do our thing, yeah, we play a practice, and uh, yeah, luckily I won, yeah. Last time you were here, you topped Group A, but didn't get it right on the Saturday night. Have you learnt your lessons and you're going to put it right this time around? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough. Yeah, you have two day nothing now. Yeah, you only yeah, you have to watch the other guys. But yeah, it, it, the, the, some people say it's an uh, advantage and some people say, yeah, it's not. But yeah, I don't see. Yeah, I hope it is an advantage. I was out there play that uh, it's always nice to, be, uh, to play on Saturday, so that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, we'll see. I hope I play better as the next time. You're here representing ADC Europe as well. Yeah. It's really taken off in Holland and continental Europe. Is it a place where it's the place to be to play darts now? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think ADC is now uh, growing up. I think uh, yeah, this is the first time for me. Uh, the the first two times I was here was home locally, but. Yeah, I think it's growing up. Yeah, ADC, yeah. And between now and Saturday, you're going to have a practice here, going to come in between sessions just to tick the arm over? Yeah, I think I'm going to watch and maybe uh, to the pub and practice, yeah. I didn't do the last thing. I did two days, I do nothing, but it didn't help. Just so maybe I now go for a practice, yeah, and, and see how that's going. Well, Chris, congratulations on topping Group A, and we'll see you on Saturday night for the finals. Yeah, thank congratulations. you. Congratulations uh, through, of course, the finals night, but interviewing you after defeat, just missed out on winning the group. Yeah, I, myself and Yella, we were talking about it in the back room and he said he was going to win 4-1 and when I hit the 42 I thought, no, I'm going to I'm gonna top it and then I hit double seven, but I'm happy to get through, that was my goal when I came here. Um, I've not played how I would have hoped yet, but the fact that I've got this far and not done that is encouraging. It's been one of the most dominant displays from two players we've seen in a group. You were both through with plenty of time to spare. Was it difficult to keep your focus after qualifying? Yeah, I said that. Uh, Yellow lost to Adam, I think it was. And he came back in the room. I said, like, mate, we're through. I, I, I know he's so experienced that his attitude is he always wants to win. And I, wanted, I always want to win as well. But you have to take into consideration that your focus might drift off a bit when that's the case. Both of your defeats have come against Yella. You might play him in the semis or maybe even in the final. That would be the best time to get revenge, right? I think I beat Mike both times last time and then I lost him in the final. So... I'll, I'll save my uh, win for then, I think. And the experience you've had here so far should work in your favour, I assume? Yeah, definitely. I, I know what it's like. I, my goal was to get back to finals night because I enjoyed myself so much. Um, so, yeah, I'm over the moon to be back and I can't wait to get, get back in here tomorrow. Neither can we. We'll see you then. Thank you very much. Right then, let's get week nine finals night underway, shall we? Cam Crabtree taking on Chris Landman. These two have met previously. That was actually in July last year on the Challenge Tour. Crabtree, the 5-2 winner on that occasion. To guide you through all the action, let's hand over to our commentary team of Paul Nicholson and Scott Mitchell. A very good evening, Abby, and welcome everybody to the week nine finals here in Portsmouth at the Live Lounge. This is the countryman Chris Landman. We haven't seen him since Wednesday afternoon because after winning Group A, he was gifted with two days off. But over those two days, Cam Crabtree, the 19-year-old from Croydon... First leg, it's Chris to throw first. Game on. He found his way through Group C with the countryman, no pun intended, of Chris Landman, Yella Klaassen. You know, you're going to see him in Group 2 140. with Fallon Sherrick and Lucas Vanek. But as for Group 1, it is these two and David Davis of Wales. I'm the asset, Paul Nicholson. This is Scott Mitchell. Finals night is upon us once again, Scott. 81. Yeah, it sure is. And oh, I enjoyed last Saturday night. And I think looking at this Saturday night, I think it's a more 60. even spread of players. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it's very tough to pick a winner. Because Saturday night, to play in the Saturday night is so different. To play in, in the group stages. I'm playing in the group stages. You're kind of doing a job and you know there's nothing really on it to the, to the Saturday night, if that makes sense. And and Saturday night, you have to get kind of, even though there's a little group stage to start it, you have to get your knockout head on. 134. Couldn't agree more. 
you have played on a Saturday night. Is it a different performance anxiety feeling coming into a Saturday night as opposed to the group stages earlier in the week? Well, it kind of starts with the back room. The, the, the players' room changes. You know, there's, there's, there's money requires there for grabs 61. and it's all or nothing. And Game show on the first oh, leg. What a, what a finish Lamman. that is to start off from Lamman. Well, he's definitely got his head on. He said in his interview Second with Phil Balls earlier first. in the week. Game on. That he lost his first game every day he played this week. But if he was to lose this one to Crabtree, he'd be in real trouble in Group 1 because he has that long wait between Game 1 and Game 5. 45. But if he was to get the win here, he would be on the front foot like Andy Bolton was two weeks ago. 177. Yeah, very much so. Andy, Andy pretty much bossed that group. On, on that Saturday night. And I thought it would be very 60. difficult to win it from Group A, but I I, I think that Andy Andy used his two days off really well and, and Chris was interviewed 60. Uh, you know, on Wednesday and he said last time I made a finals night I, I did nothing for two days and then came here and and did my usual thing and, and I know this Can time he went away. And he and he went to a found a pub to have a practice and to make sure that his arm was still moving. And and he also watched some of the games to keep his arm potential opponents 92. who he could be facing tonight. This would be the ideal start if he takes out a 2-0 lead, but it's incredibly unlikely. 100. Because Cam has had a really good bounce Cam, back here 32. in leg two. Game shot on the second just leg. about to see it. Cam never Crabtree. say never. But... Cam says, it's my leg, not yours. This is a strong start. 14 data from Third Landman. Gets Chris to throw first. 15 in Game response on. from Crabtree. And we're talking about two players who really do have a good ceiling. Now, One before we go too deep into this game, which has already got three maximums and a 177, I just want to mention the fact that 95. Chris Landman, if you want to know how good his form is in 2023, if you look at what he's done this week, 60. coupled with the stuff away from here. Seven of the eight best averages in his career, which are recorded, have happened this year. 59. That tells you everything, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I've, I've known Chris a while through the through the BDO system and, and what have you, and I've never seen him playing better. 140. I've never seen him averaging better. And you know that you know, confidence breeds confidence, doesn't it? And and he's just one confident guy with his game at 100. the minute. 100. Chris should require 121. 25 off. Leaves 96. 105. Another great leg. Crabtree will be thinking that maybe this leg is not the one that I'm going to get that break of throw that Chris I need. Chris require 60. Landman by winning group A gave himself the darts in game one of his night. Game and he's using the them very leg. well so far. Chris Lambert. That's another five-visit leg. Tremendous order from our crowd tonight. Full leg, it's Cam Great to, to have them along. Game on. We have a young Fallon Sherrick fan in the front row already. Won't have to wait too long to see her hero because 100. she's up against Lucas Vanig in game two. Yeah, I did notice that shirt on the way in. Ah. Uh... 140. This pace is, the, the, the pace here is suiting each other here. They're both quite, not not super rapid, but they're, they're no 100. slouches by any means. And they're both, they're both sort of settled lovely to their own paces. 60. There is a possibility that Landman could be through after playing one game in Group 1. But that would mean that Crabtree would be eliminated. 100. If Cam was to lose to Chris and to lose to David Davis in game three, Landman would have 100. a playoff with David Davis in game five to see who wins the group. That's the ideal scenario. It takes all of the pressure off before you even come 41. back. 41. Loose visit from Cam there. I'd let Lamman in. 140. And he's weighted in with both Can feet. He require 160. He's already taken a 61 checkout, so be on watch, Mr. Crabtree. You're in a bit of trouble now. 100. 
Christian requires 61. You might have to dodge break darts here. Or should I say break dart? Hammond won't worry here. He's back up to his top. 21. He usually Cam, you require he's been 60. hitting all week. Tops for Crabtree. Game shot on the fourth Worst leg. leg of the match. Cam Crabtree. And that's a 17 darter. What does that tell you about the standard we're seeing already in the week nine finals night? Fifth leg, it's Chris to throw first. Just look Game at Lyman for the week. Just under 88 as an average for 15 games in Group A. 70. Crabtree just shy of 86. Just a little bit of a disturbance there. We apologise about that. We do actually have in the crowd tonight one of our Group A competitors who did not make it to Saturday night. Robin Baker has joined us towards the front row. Great to have Robin with us. I also think Daryl Pilgrim's in tonight supporting Cam. He's going to be here next week. Looking to get his second weekly 95. title under this roof. And his third in total. Maybe he's getting a little jump start then and, and re reassociating himself with the venue. 60. Yeah, I think he's getting a bit of an intel mission to see who his challenges could be potentially if he was to make Champions Week at the end of July. 59. This one is still in the balance. 97. But if it is to remain that way, Crabtree needs two trebles to get to a finish. 134. Not a problem. Pressure required 134. He keeps Landman honest. 94. Cam, you require 156. This would be seismic. Double 18. Game it's absolutely the wonderful. Play. The timing Cam of Crabtree. that shot has just shaken Landman, and he might just again lose his first game of the day. It's not as if he's playing poorly. He's averaging nearly 100. Six, it's Cam to throw but he's first. now on the rack because Cam Crabtree, if he holds, he wins the first game, game of the on. night. And we're millimetres away there. That was nearly a double four. Uh, he nearly dragged it into the double four, but hey, look. The whole of the the whole of that reg segment in the eighteen is the double, so it doesn't matter which corner you hit. In is in. What, what a, a fantastic shot it was! What a time to get your best finish of the week as well. He's played the last 16. couple of days and he's mustered one one six as his best. He's just obliterated that. And we have seen some amazing finishes this week. One six four one from David Davis. One hundred and seventy from Lucas Vayner yesterday. 60. Might even get the option to vote on checkout of the week a little bit later tonight, so watch out for that one. 100. Landman's in trouble of losing this first game. 100. Finishes like that 156 can change entire evenings. We're not the stuffing out of you. There's no two ways about it. You sat there on top thinking. 45. You know, the, the percentage of a one five six going on you when you're sat on top is it's a long shot, isn't it? And uh one hundred it does, it, it messes your mind up totally. It's probably a two or three percent shot, isn't it? You give someone a hundred goals, they might hit it twice or thrice. Sixty. Yeah, I agree with that. Totally agree. Sixty. No trouble there. Can Just imagine if he leaves 81 or 41. That shot is a lot more gettable. But now he's got to pluck up 29. Something like the 141 that he hit in group 121. A. Just to stay in the match. 91. Doesn't get a chance. 97. If Crabtree can, can get a second consecutive Tum plus finish. He will get the first two points in group one. Did he choose right there? 88. Should he have gone to the 48 to dart Christian earlier? Christian required 24. Landman breaks back and play. takes the impetus Chris into Landman. leg seven. What a great first game. These are the averages for the first six legs. They are seven both the final playing leg. It's above Chris to throw their first. weekly level. Game on. 
It's Saturday night, Nico. You don't want to be leaving anything behind. 100. Financial rewards are there tonight. Get into the semis. £1,250 guaranteed. You can double that if you make the final. And then you can double it again if you win. 60. Well, that place in Champions Week at the end of the month. It's in sight already. 96. There are eight names already there. We will add another four this month. One huge one eighty. Fourth of the game. And his tenth of the week. Fifty eight. This is extraordinary. One hundred and forty. He is hitting landman hard. And I agree with you, Scott. I think the pace of this game is one hundred and twenty five. Can it you recall definitely 121? helped in the concept of the game. And it's happy now we go trouble 17. It's bullseye for the match. 83. Yeah, Christian think, require 122. I think you'll have to send a postcode to that last dart. The landman had a chance to 82. nick this one away. Can you require They can 38? be separated by two points in the entire match. Was that meant to be a six? It doesn't matter. Because game he wins shot. the game against the, the darts. Go and Landman now has a break before he returns in game five. And if he was to lose that one, the Group A winner would be out. But Cam Crabtree starts with a fabulous performance. 92.66 the average. A couple of maximums in there. And he beats the Group A winner by four legs to three on finals night.
Welcome back to finals night here at the Moda Super Series. What a cracker we have been treated to in our opening game of Group 1. Cam Crabtree coming through in a decider, a sublime 1-5-6 out to take him within one of winning the match before a 14 data to complete the job. 4-3 over Chris Landman. He'll return in a little while, but our attention now turns to Group 2, and it's Fallon Sherrick taking on Lucas Veinig. Before we get into the action, let's hear from both of the players, we spoke to them after they'd progressed through to finals night. Congratulations through to finals night once again. Just sum up how you feel about how you've played this week. Uh, yeah, no, I'm quite happy how I played. Uh, you know, there's a bit more consistency a little bit. Um, and obviously I'm pulling out some really good legs at the moment when I'm needing it at the end of games. And that's what I've been like looking for for the past couple of months. So now it's coming into play. I'm quite excited. And none better than the, the very last leg of the night as well, 10 darts. Yeah. I was like, right, hit this because this is a really good leg. Don't like miss it. And I was like, right, really, really focus. Uh, beat the 12 darts that you had the other night. Last three times you've been in group, but you've, you've won it every time. It just seems to suit you, doesn't it, playing these, these late nights? Yeah, no, I definitely prefer playing in this group um, because of the late nights and stuff like that. Um, obviously, when I'd done the week, it was really hard getting up and, you know, playing from the mornings and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I just prefer the night because, you know, then you can wake up, you can prepare right, you can have something to eat before you come. And when you're in the mornings and stuff, it's hard to kind of get up, have breakfast and then kind of prepare by like, what is it, 10 o'clock start? Yeah, and finals night, you were you kicking yourself a little bit after last time and you're hoping to, to put it right tomorrow? Yeah, no, uh, I was a little bit because I felt like um, I was overthinking because I felt like I played well. Um, the averages, you know, I was happy with the averages, but then when it come to the crucial bits, I just weren't closing the games out. Um, so obviously I've come away from it, come back, and I was like, right, okay, this time, next time you come to finals night, hopefully... You know, I've made it through now. Uh, if I need like one leg and stuff, um, where I've put the work in now, hopefully I can get that one leg and get further and, you know, maybe try and get further than I have. Well, we'll hope you do and we'll see you tomorrow. Well done. Thank you. Now joined by one of the three players to qualify for finals night from Group B, Lucas Veinig. Just sum up how you feel you've played in Group B. Yes, uh, Group B was fantastic. It was a really tough group and I'm really glad to come to the finals night again. And yes, I'm glad to stay here. And you knew that you were through to finals night, halfway through your games tonight. Is it quite difficult then to keep up the same level of urgency? I heard from you <laughs> and that was maybe a little a problem for me. But um, David plays fantastic against me. I had some problems, but... I'm in finals tonight and that is everything. Yeah, and you've managed to reel in the big fish as well already oh, tonight. That'll yeah. give you significant confidence, of course. We did see you starting a number of the legs on 19s as well. Are you just trying out a few things now that you know you're through? Oh, I always try to uh, train the 19 uh, at home and I love it because I feel really confident and I often play the 19 in games um, and yes. It's good. <laughs> if you were to be critical of yourself, is there anything you feel needs to be better tomorrow? A little bit, but I don't talk it here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, keeping his cards close yes. to his chest. And one other thing, I just want to talk about, you know, when you're here at finals night, we've seen you win a week previously. If you do manage to win another week, are you going to appear at Champions Week this time around? When I win the week, next time I will go to Champions Week. The last time it was too difficult to get time off my job and everything, it was too short. And the last time I didn't thought I can win this week, but today is a, no. Tomorrow is a <laughs> new night and yes, I will try my best. Lovely to hear from Lucas Wenig, who makes another appearance in Saturday night here. This time he's in group two with the Queen of the Palace, Fallon Sherrick, and Yella Klaas in the former. BDO Lakeside champion will join them in game four where he will take on Lucas but at that time who will have got the first win this is one of the strongest mini groups that we've had in the time that we've been in Portsmouth and we are talking about two weekly winners under this roof and Fallon Sherrick who's been to a final on Saturday night against Steve West under this roof and has a weekly title in the previous venue in Southampton, where she first beat... First leg, it's Fallon to throw first. Game on. A BDO 
world champion in Wayne Warren. I have another BDO world champion sitting next to me in Scott Mitchell. This group is borderline ridiculous, isn't it? 140. Absolutely. When I was asked at the top of the show there, I made sure I sat well and truly on the fence here. I know I'm paid for an opinion, but even if you have an opinion, this one is just so 85. difficult to call this little group of three. Indeed. So let's look into the numbers. Over the last couple of days, we've seen Vanig and Sherrick both playing in 42. Group B. So their metrics are going to be very fair because they've both played eight games. Sherrick won the group. Vanig was third. Don't let that fool you, though. He was safe well before anybody else. He just started to slow down at the end when he knew he was already safe. Yeah, that's what he commented there with 96. Abby on the, on the balcony that uh, once uh, he knew that he was safe. And, and and I've got to be honest, as a player, that's the worst case scenario, isn't it? With a couple of games to go, you know you're safe and um, you do 84. you do go off your metal a little bit and uh, mentally you, 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 you just relax too much in the mind, I think. One of the other things that makes this fixture very tight is if you compare the averages for these two players over the last couple of nights. You can split them by 0.16. 89.34 for Sherrick, 89.5 for Vanig. 95. Fallon, you require 83. There's very little to split them over the course of the last couple of days, and their doubles percentage is identical at 37%. 58. First leg might go to Vanig against the throw now if he can find this 100 checkout. He's had a couple of loose ones in this game that have not quite sat in his hand properly. And it's another tops for what would be a monumental Fallon, opening leg 25. for him. But he, I think he's caught the top of the flight of the other one. Double eight. Game and Sherrick the gets the good leg. start in 17 Fallon dots. Sherrick. I noticed something a little bit around about an hour and 15 minutes ago. There were a Second few leg, players to throw on first. the stage just game getting on. a little grip of the playing conditions tonight. And a few times, Lucas did have a dart slip out of his hand. It's a little bit clammy here in Portsmouth today. There have been some thunderstorms 41. which have been trying to clear the air. But it's still a bit close, which means that the conditions are quite warm. And you add 97. a crowd into the equation and the big lights on, on the stage. And it is... Slightly warmer conditions in there than it is in the rest of the building. 96. So that can make a difference. And I did just notice that he had a couple slip out of his hand in that first leg. Maybe the experience of Sherrick playing around the world 45. in different conditions might help her tonight. But she's definitely building up for the defence of that world match play at the Winter Gardens, which in itself is a very hot place to play to be fair with Fallon, I don't think 45. she's bothered where she throws. She's one of those that, that keeps the game very simple. She goes to win every leg. She breaks the games down up to a leg at a time. I think that's a very sensible way to do it. And we've seen it work for her time and time again. They have a win each over the last couple of days as well. 171. That's a much needed three treble visit there from Lou. It forces Sherrick to get in onto a finish. 59. And she does. Lucas she's now behind. Courtesy of that three treble visit from Lucas. This would be some six dark kill. Think about some 100. of the finishes that Fallon's had the Fallon last couple of days. 160. Nothing really better than that 144 on Thursday. But she's going to need mistakes from Lucas. 100. If she wants a 2-0 lead. Lucas should require 48. It's finals night. We've seen those big shots go already this evening with Cam Crabtree. That is an error. 32. Fallon, you require 60. Sherrick, no hesitation. Straight in for the shot Game and shot straight into that 2 0 lead. Fallon Sherrick. She has fans here tonight and she'll have plenty of fans watching along as well to see how Third she's like feeling Fallon going into first. what is a Game very on. busy summer. As far as how busy 
that summer is, it may even depend on what happens here tonight because she could be returning in a matter of four weeks if she wins. Yeah, she could. I've noticed of late, and I and I don't know whether it's because I haven't seen so much of her play lately. She used to play in Sexy. her footwear has changed. She used to wear and play in sort of what I would call little dolly shoes. Um, but now she wears a a more solid one hundred and forty footed. What looks like a, a a black trainer type thing, and I wonder if there's a reason for that because it she stands a lot stiller than she used to. And I wonder whether it's to do it something to do with that. Eighty two. You think in the ballet style shoes she used to wear, she was spending so much time on her feet that it would probably become painful and flatten her feet out. Forty eight. Whereas with these more comfortable options, spending time on your feet is not as much of a chore. I think you probably hit the nail on the head there. I'd have to ask her, but I it's just something I've noticed about her. One hundred and thirty nine over the last Sort of six months or so. Fifty nine. This leg is in the balance. And I wonder what Yellow Klassen is thinking about this group. If Sherrick was to go on to win tonight, one hundred. She'd be the first lady to win a weekly title in this venue. She is still the first to win a weekly title in the Motor Super Series history. Lucas should require 120. And she's left double eight again. That 60 is obscured. If he hits this, it'll be a worldie of a dart. And he almost did. 100. Fallon, you require Ironically, 60. Ironically, the third dart was even harder. Then he hits it. 2 fours. Big shot. 12. This Lucas should require was 20. for a hold. Now, this is for a break of throw. I think she knew that was a big dart Game as well. shot on the third lay. Lucas she just dragged it inside. And Wenig was not needing a second opportunity. Full thing. It's Lucas the double to throw 10 first. with his first dart. Game on. Now has the throw. It's a real chance to get himself back in this match. But we know that Fallon throws with a lot more freedom against the throw. 140. When they played yesterday, it was this fixture that got Sherrick through. She had a game spare, knowing that she was safe. And when the shackles came off, she produced the best performance of the entire week. 103.66. And four hits from six on doubles against Andy Jenkins, who was already eliminated. But prior to that, Fallon beat Lucas Vanek by four legs to one. It was a lot closer when they played on Thursday. 56. It was the odd leg. But Sherrick would admit that even she knows she should have won that much as well. 45. Could be one of those nights, Scott, where everything goes 4-3. <laughs> Could well 60. be, to be honest. We, we didn't have many during the week, did we? So uh... Nope, we didn't get any in Group C on Thursday, which was very strange. But if we do get a lot of legs tonight, more drama, more anticipation for the next games, and value for money for the people in the crowd. Even though their tickets were free. Super visit there from Vinnig. One forty to leave the thirty-six. Lucas should require thirty-six. Two eighteens. If he misses nines, he could game shot on the four play. Lucas Vinnig to go back to double eighteen, but he didn't need to. That was a very strong fourteen data. Fifth leg, it's Fallon to throw it's first. Funny because thirty-six game gets left now, and and after the thirty-six, some people do decide to go that. Two root and head back to 16 so you can be a more aggressive at it. 100. Uh, but it, it uh, it's something that's just crept into the game in more recent times. Yeah, I think more players are splitting that kind of shot than ever before. I think you're right. 58. Just oh. if you are a new viewer to our Motor Super Series action here. 
Two players go through each group into the semi-finals. One hundred. If you win both your games in the group, you will win the group, of course. But if you threw, it's a knockout scenario in the final three games of the week. Ninety-one. I don't know how you feel, Scott, but I get the feeling this is where Sherrit comes into her own when she's tested. One hundred and forty. Yes, she commented um, uh, before for the the matches there with the interview that she said she's now starting when she needs to produce a leg, she's producing. And that's what she's been Fallen doing all the practice on. That's why she's been, been working on that. And once you start doing that, the confidence comes along doing it. And talking to confidence here. 96. That was so tight to the bullseye. But she didn't really need to go that way with Vinnig back on 292. She's definitely taking 59. the aggressive road. Fallon, you require 25. You look at that expression on her face. It's emotionless. Nine. She will return for double eight, but that corner of the board is probably what needs most work over this summer because she's not as good on double 16 and double eight as she once was. Maybe it's one of the reasons why she's leaving it a bit more. Fallon, you she wants 16. to get her own back. And Game she does. 3 2 Sherrick. Fallon Sherrick. That young man in the crowd next to the Fallon Sherrick. It's fan, Lucas to throw first. He was given Game the darts on. by Super Series 2 champion Raymond Smith upon the victory. Look after them, young man. They might be worth something someday. 11. Not the ideal start there for Lou. 43. When you can't take advantage of that 11 start, you're kicking yourself inside. Yeah, indeed. It's... Oh, that was a, there was a bit of shoulder in 49. that one from Vinnick. When he won his weekly title here, Lucas beat our good friend John Henderson. Whoa, Super response. Second 180 of this contest for Sherrick. That takes it on to 17 maximums for the week. Coincidentally, the most that have been hit this week are by the other person 42. in this group. 19 for Yella Klaassen. But then again, he has played the most games as well with 25. 180 is all about the timing, and the timing of the Sherrick 180 there was absolutely key, I think, to where this match is now going to head. A 171 on the 19s earlier really helped him out. Could he get another? 135. Not quite. Firmly. Advantage. Lady in pink. 100. You fancy he needs a maximum or a 140 here to stand any chance of staying in the match. Fifty-eight. It's not there. Fallon, you require eighty. Sherrick has got time. Doesn't even need to go twenty and bolt. Hence double eight. Sixty-nine. That expression tells you a story. He's having checkered times in the bottom left corner. But she's still on the cusp of a victory. Frustration for the man from Germany. 63. Fallon, you require 16. Is it Joy for Sherrick? Game you bet it is. And the match. She starts four Fallon legs to Sherrick. two. And she's halfway to winning group two as well. She will return in game six to take on Yella Klaassen. And she will know exactly what she needs to do by the time that comes around. They are the stats from her victory. One out of three hit on every double. And that's good enough to win that one by four legs to two.
This is the Motor Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Right then, our focus now returns to Group 1, Cam Crabtree victorious in his opening match, aided by a wonderful 1-5-6 out, and he will be through to the semi-finals with another win here. He's taken on David Davis, who's making his first appearance at finals night here at the Live Lounge. Before we get into the action, let's hear from the Welshman now. I spoke to him last night after his Group B campaign came to a conclusion. I am now joined by a player who has made it through to finals night for the first time. David Davis, third time of asking. You finally made it through. What was the overriding emotion when you managed to pin that winning double to make it through? Especially against Luca as well. It was always uh, a tough ask. So when I did go in, I didn't know emotional joy, cry. I, I, I don't know. It, everything was just like sort of like a monkey off my shoulder. I've done it now. So no, looking forward to it tomorrow. Yeah. And how were you feeling after Wednesday's session? Because it wasn't the first time that you've missed out on qualifying for finals night on legs difference. So how much did that start playing on your mind? Um, like I said, on Monday, I, I quite like to play Thursday, Friday anyways, keep the, the, the uh, hand arm eye coordination in. So, but to lose on, on leg difference again, then I thought being in this group, it could come down to leg difference again. So that was just chewing up at me, but no, I'm in now, so no, no, really happy. Yeah, and I spoke to you on Tuesday morning. You said you really needed to up the score, and you certainly did that. But at times in Group B, your finishing has been flawless. You must feel like everything's coming together at the right time. Yeah, I don't think opponents can, can leave me much or, or, or settle up because they know that I'm there and I, I am going to pounce. Um, after Monday, like I said, I did ride my luck. There was a long way to go. I did up my scoring and doubles have helped me out and I've, I've, I've took out some really good finishes this week. Yeah, absolutely. And you're not only through, you still have an opportunity of topping the Group B table. How much additional confidence would that give you? Um, just getting through was the main thing. First, second or third, I'll, I'll, I'll take anything and I'll, um, I'll prove my worth tomorrow as well. He wants to prove his worth. I loved that interview with David Davis. He's waited a little bit of time to get here for a Saturday night. But now that he's here, he's wearing his Welsh red. He's up against the person who has won his first game in this Group 1 scenario here in Week 9. But interestingly, he has the luxury 
coming into this night a little bit later, the 38-year-old from Denby, using Mark Webster darts, I might add. Good friend of Mark's he is. He has the luxury of losing this game and still being able to qualify by winning one match. However, he would love to beat Cam Crabtree and have the chance of winning the group a little bit later, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, it must be a difficult one mentally to come into, knowing that Cam has already won. But I don't think... First leg, it's Cam to throw first. Messed up with Game all that. On. I think he just goes about his business. He seems to, from what I've seen of him this week, do whatever the other player is doing to him. So if the other player is playing well, he, he'll he average 95 and go with you. 81. So I'm interested to see how he goes here. And, and Cam obviously has the darts as well. So if you're thinking negatively, everything's against him before he starts here for Davies. 60. I've been really impressed with him, especially over the last couple of days, because his doubling has been... Absolutely superb. He was well over 50% yesterday. Easily. He said in his interview there with Avi that he's, he, you give me a chance, I'm ready and waiting to pounce. And that has been exactly what he's done all week. He's had some of the biggest finishes of the week, including that 164 85. from Thursday night, which made us all look a little bit silly. Yeah, we won't be able to live that one down, mate. We, um, you know, the Nine, production six, six. team are quite happy to uh, remind us of that. Yes, they were. Just looking into some of his numbers for the week. A running average of 86.37, which is better than that of Cam Crabtree for this week. But it's all about what's happening tonight as opposed to what's happened over the last few days. Well, Davies has had the second most Nine, darts six, at six. double this week. Because he, like Yella Klaassen in Group 2, has played five days coming into this instead of two or three like the others. Some people in sport like to wear their favourite shirt on the most important day of the week. 59. Or indeed Can the most important day of the year. He's got a little bit of Stanford University red of Tiger Woods on tonight, has David. But he'd love to hoist that trophy. 93. In those Wales colours, that's for sure. And he'd love to be talking to another Welshman and Abby Davis by the end of the night. Yeah, indeed he would. Spoke to Cam earlier and he said he wore his pink and black yesterday for me. Didn't realise I wasn't here. Cam, you require 36. Oh, well, we can't have everything. Game on the first That double 18 is right Crabtree. on the end of his arm. So I got a 156, like Abby mentioned earlier on. It was key in Second that win against Chris Landman. First game on. He starts off in ideal fashion right there, wearing a little bit of light and dark blue tonight. 95. Always looks really calm in these scenarios, does Cam. He's got some supporters in the crowd tonight. Not exactly the longest distance between 96. where he's from and here. A little around the two-hour mark. A little bit further to North Wales, where David Davis is from. 60. Yeah, that's a bit of a trek from here, North Wales. Cam seems to be continuing where he left off game one this evening. That 156 has given him a big, big boost. Well, David is the only person here tonight who has not been 60. to a Saturday night before. Does that make a difference? I think sometimes when you haven't been there and you're not expecting knowing what 95. to expect, it can be a blessing. If you've been here a couple of times and you've had a harsh night and, and had your bus fare home early, then I suppose it's there's battle scars, aren't there? 140. So what you're saying is... Cam, you require 170. He hasn't got any emotional damage here for Saturday nights. It's all fresh. Sometimes a little bit of ignorance is bliss. 134. But the bliss is coming the David way of Crabtree, unless this 146 is plugged. And look what he's left again. Double 18. 58. 
Cam, you require 36. Top right corner again. And that does not work out this time, giving Davies Davies an easier chance this time around. It's giving Davies a chance to pounce. He said this is what he does. But pounce he does not. Cam, you require nine. Double four. Game two on the second leg. He Cam is getting Crabtree. very close to winning this group. And if he does do it in this game, it will mean that he will take so, like, part in semi-final first. number one as the Game group on. winner. And the big benefit of winning the group is that you have the darts in the semi-finals. It's a massive benefit in this best of seven. 121. Race. It really is. But here, when we get to the final, it's a bull up. So that everything's on as even when it comes to that last game. It's very fair, isn't it? They get the, the darts evenly throughout the week. And then when it comes to the night time, the benefit goes to the people who win the group when they get here. But by winning the group on the night, you then get the darts a little bit later in the evening. But it's only fair when you come to the final game that there is the 93. only bull shoot off of the week. We may even have that glorious nine dart shootout scenario, but 46. only in group one will we get that if David Davis wins 4 3. If that doesn't happen, it's not going to happen. But then again, it could happen in group two. One hundred and forty. We'll get to that in time. The scenarios are giving me a headache already, so we'll leave it for a time 96. being. Ninety-six. Let's not worry about it now. He's going to have a very busy time of it over the next few days as camp. Imagine the confidence he will be exuding if he wins tonight, and then goes to the PDC Pro Tour in Leicester on Monday Can and you Tuesday as an alternate. Or big money at the Morningside Arena as well. 96. He's doing a lot of things right. David to require 84. You think that Davis is going to have to hit this to stay in this Group 1 match. Double 11. Game he shot pounced the this time. Day. David Davis. He's constantly wiping his hands though. I don't know if you've noticed that, Scott. Maybe the conditions are a little clammy. And he's just having to micromanage this situation. Four yeah, he's, David to throw he's been first. doing kind of that all week. Game on. Uh, you know, goes back to the table, rubs his darts off on his towel. And I think it's become part of his routine more than anything. Because I'm not sure that it was warm enough on 59. days during the week that it would have felt like that. But I know that it will tonight. And maybe he's turned it into part of his routine on, on throwing. Maybe he doesn't even 60. notice he does it. Some of the things that we do are completely unconscious. The one thing I will say about his equipment, because we mentioned that he's using a 19 gram Mark Webster dart. These have got some age. I used to have a set of these myself. 60. They were a gift from Mark. And they haven't made those for over 10 years. Well, I'd better look after my set then, because I've got a set of those at home as well. I actually bought mine because, obviously, you know, Mark doesn't like me as much as he does you and didn't give them as a gift to me. Um, I actually bought mine as kind of a, a spare set at one point in my life. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I've got a set at home as well. It's very important when you've got a a set of darts that 96. do have age and they don't make them anymore to have a little bit of back stock if you need them. If something happens to a dart, whether it's a point snapping, that can be replaced. But if something structurally changes with the dart, having a spare of a set that you do not want to change, it's imperative that you have a backup. We've talked about Ryan Finesse in the past. 59. He wanted to get a set of darts and he had to go to eBay to find the ones that he wanted because they didn't make them anymore.
Crabtree was in such a good position to go 3 0 up. He's been denied. And this one might be dragged into a bit of a slugfest. 130. Cam's winning average in the first game David was north of 92. It's around about the same. He's looking at the 42. That was the right thing to do, considering how much of that bullseye he could see, which was not much. Awkward angle as well on the dart, wasn't it? 110. Can you require 52? I suppose leaving double 11 is good because he's already hit it. And that double 43. 18 and double 9 trick Crabtree again. David require 22. Did he mean to leave 22? Or did he miscount? Yeah, it does look like he's splitting it by hitting the big 11. 14. Can you require the double 11 nine? was closer to the treble. Two fours. Game shot on the and fourth Crabtree play. survives in like Can four Crabtree. to take a very big advantage. He's very close to winning the group. I mentioned that if he does win the group, he Fifth will play it in game seven of the first. night. Game on. It's quite a long time between now and then. It's 8.40 local time. The first semi-final will start at 10.05. That's a long time to wait. It is when you think we're playing a 60. very short format as well. So he will be... He'll have to sort of re-prepare or part prepare the way that he started the evening. It's, it's always difficult to restart. Particularly after two wins as well. There are different scenarios in sport where... People have to stop and then restart. Think about 140. rain or other weather conditions in tennis, rain in cricket. Something might take you off the golf course like thunder and lightning, which is something we've had here in this area over the last 100. 48 hours. But the only thing that stops you here is the time that we have scheduled the game. 96. Or if you don't progress. But the lovely thing here about the timings and the schedulings of the game, you know exactly when you're going to play. You go on to the minute. 43. To the second, more or less. And players love that, don't they? Oh, we do. We absolutely do. There's nothing worse than going, oh, we're ahead of schedule. We're 25 minutes in front and, and you're, you're 25 minutes in front of your preparation, and it can be a world championships where you've been all year traveling to get there, and then all of a sudden, everything feels like it's being pulled Can out from under your feet. 65. Cam's looking to do that to David Davis. Two more darts to take him out of commission in his first game. 25. Interesting there with 56. I would David have thought he'd have gone 20, 36. Chose not to, but he is coming back for tops. Maybe the angle of the dart going in the board is just kinder for a 35. shot. Where the double is at a Can slant instead 40. of being completely horizontal. He's not spent a great deal of time on tops tonight. 20. And he has not got close to it right there. That's three David match darts gone. 97. Now he's got a mental battle with himself. Fifty-four needed for a shot at tops, and he can't get it. 41. This is not what we've been seeing. Can you require from 20? Davis the last couple of days? Crabtree Game wins again. Shots and the match. He wins group Cam one, Crabtree. and he now has over an hour off before he returns in the first semi-final from just after 10 o'clock, which will be live on Sporty Stuff TV. There is confirmation of that win. He takes advantage of Davis not playing his best, but we now know that Davis plays Landman in game five, and the winner of that one will go through group one with Cam Crabtree.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where I am now joined by the first player through to the semi-finals. Cam, sum up how you feel you've played so far tonight. Um, I was quite happy with the game against Chris, except when I celebrated checking out 156, because then my adrenaline went a bit mad. And then in that game, I just, I did enough. And sometimes you don't have to be brilliant, you just have to do enough, so. Yeah, you said after that 156, you went back in the practice room and apologized for the way you celebrated. Yeah, well, it's not nice. So you, you wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it if someone did that to me. Um, but it, it's a way to release adrenaline. It didn't work there, but you know, I, I, I don't want to come across as that person. You certainly don't. But then you were looking over your stats from your second match. You saw it was four out of 14 on the outer ring. How much pressure does it add when you know your opponent has been taking out big finishes all week? Yeah, I was not laying up against David. I, uh, if I had something and he was on 170, I was going for it. And... You know, it's uh, you, you just got to make sure that you you win the legs. 
Yeah, absolutely. How much better equipped do you feel coming here to finals night this time around than you did the last time you made it through? Yeah, obviously I know what it's going to be like, so the heat is different and that's something to challenge with, but I know how the format is, I know what to expect, so I could come into it kind of knowing, knowing what was going to go on, so I feel all right. And you must be feeling very confident about where your game is heading into your first semi-final, but you've got quite a long wait before that gets underway. Over an hour, what are you going to do in that time? I'll probably irritate everyone with talking so much in the practice room, but yeah, I'm just going there, chill, the aircon's on, so I won't have to put up with this heat, and yeah, just enjoy the rest of the evening. Very best of luck for the rest of the night. Thank you very much. Right then, it's time for our middle match in Group 2, so let's hand back to our commentary team to guide you through the action. Thanks, Avi. That was a very, very good interview with Cam Crabtree, who has won Group 1 tonight. We'll find out who joins him in the semi-finals from that group a little bit later on. But now we turn our attention to Group 2 once again. And we have the 28-year-old from Munchausen back on the hockey. And he knows if he loses, he will be eliminated. It's as simple as that. He lost his first game against Fallon first Sherrick. Leg, it's and he could be the first, first person out the door. Game on. At the expense of the 2006 BDO World Champion, Hila Klassen. Now, it's interesting to me, Scott Mitchell, that Cam Crabtree has referenced the heat in the playing arena. Easy and this one. is something that Klassen has admitted that he doesn't like. He doesn't like playing in hot conditions. No, 134. He's a, I don't know why Cam's moaning about it. He's a skinny little watcher, isn't he? 19 years old. Dear, oh dear. Complaining about the heat. I used to love the heat when I was 19 years old. 140. Well, Yellow's had a bit of an interesting night, hasn't he? He's been scrambling around the arena trying to 45. fix a malfunctioned point. It seems to me like it has been fixed, but maybe he's been... Rushing around a little bit too much tonight instead of preparing in the manner that he wanted. But what I will say is that when that happens, 60. you have to remain calm and you've got to use the experience that you've got and he's got plenty of it. Yeah, 100. as long as it's sorted, you, you, you move on. I think if it was five minutes before the game, then that would be a bigger issue. But I think he had sort of a game or two before... He's had time to, to get used to whatever he's done with the dart as well and had a few throws with it. So he knows it's going to be sound. He knows it's going to be okay. 42. Uh, he'll be okay Lucas with that, I think. Lucas should 160. We'll have a little closer look at the Cobra's week in leg two, but let's see if Lucas can take this 160 out. 100. Not quite, but he will return for 60 points and the lead. We are looking at two former 82. weekly Lucas champions 60. in this arena. They've both done it before. Doesn't quite like that one because the flight is kicked left. Game but he's got around the first it. Leg. Wonderful Lucas first shot. 17 darts for the first leg. Well, Yellow this week has played more games than anybody Second leg. else. Is Yellow to throw first. Game on. 15 games in Group A. Found his way to fourth position. 134. Meaning that he went to Group C, playing 10 games there, where he won the group. 25 games for a running average of 84.16. 135% on his doubles. He's had more shots at the outer ring than anybody. Over 200. 134. So what you're saying, and he's well-practiced and should be ready to go tonight. Well, there has been... Has been in the past some people who would say, I feel so sharp because of all of the games I've played. I feel ready to win. But some people would say that playing 25 games may be too much. I'm not convinced that 25 games is too much for Klassen. I've seen the amount that he practices and the amount that he plays in preparation for stuff. It won't be a problem for him. No, he's one of those that when you do go to a challenge tour, when I was on the pro tour, he was there. Yellow, you require 100. He seemed to be always at the board. 64. Lucas, you require 100. This time he leaves double 18. And he will get a look at it. The one double that he's been a master at over the last couple of days is double top. 47. 
Yellow, you require 36. I'm surprised he didn't leave it again. 28. You might pay the price. Lucas, you require 91. On 18s and 9s. I'm not convinced he wasn't actually after a 10 when he went to split there. Or set up. This bullseye is inviting. The guide is really good. 66. Doesn't quite work out. Yellow, you require eight. Does this. Game shot on the second leg. Yes, it does. Yellow Klassen. He won't be happy with a 17 darter. But when you compare a 17 dart leg to what Third he's leg, done it's this week. to throw first. Game on. It's better. Seems like a long time ago that Klassen did qualify through to the previous Champions 100. Week. It was Series 3, Week 3. And if you consider the fact that... 84. Lucas Wernig did not take part in the Champions Week after he won a week. It's only Klassen that has taken part in a Champions Week of everybody here tonight. 180. That's a beautiful 180. First of the game. 40. And nobody's got more this week than Yella Klaassen. When he gets his first one, because you believe he will get one, he'll be the first person to get to 20 for the week. 96. Just to give you an indication of the power of Sherrick's 180 scores over the last couple of days, though. She Lucas got 10 on Thursday, and it took Andy Jenkins four days to get to that point. I'm sure Andy will be over the moon with that stat if he's listening this evening. 105. I'm expecting a text any minute. We could have seen Andy Jenkins here, but he did not qualify through Group A or indeed through 140. Group B. 140. He'll come again. Lucas should require He'll 20. Be back. Yeah, without doubt. And it's Benny Game now. shot on the third leg. Lucas Feeney. Double 10 to take a 2 1 lead. It's only with throw at the moment. Fourth leg, it's yellow to we throw. We do have first. a 10 second Game gap on. between every leg here at the Motor Super Series. And it's 45. something that Klassen has to get used to. He is always wanting to get to that hockey really quick. Yeah, he does actually at times attempt to throw 100. before the referee calls the game up. And he's just one of those that likes to keep his pace up. It's not, it's just naturally what he does. 134. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I'm sure he's a marker's nightmare when you're doing it on a chalkboard on a floor tournament and he's... I bet he's ready to go before you've even rubbed the, the score from the last leg off. Absolutely right. He's probably very happy that a lot of venues now use electronic scoreboards. 85. Where it's just a couple of buttons pushed. You don't have to wipe something off the board and then put a chalk mark up for the leg that's just been 93. won. 93. Just to get into the nine dart shootout scenario, if we are to get one tonight, the result that we need... In this game is a Lucas Vernig win by four legs to two. 96. And then Klassen would have to beat Sherrick 4-2. 180. There's the 20th 180 of the week then. 80. I'll be really interested to see what he leaves here, Scott. What's he going to choose? 35. Yellow, you require 49. for 32, I do. 17. It's the right play because 16s break down better than anything else. There's no use of the one or the three unless you really do miss by some distance. 90. He's back for 32. Yellow, you require 32. For 2-2. Two, two. 95. The disappointment, you don't need me Lucas to tell you how he feels. 95. You can see it on his face. Now then, this is creeping back in. This is what he was doing in Group A at the start of the week. Having five or six darts at doubles and then not converting. He did change that around in the last couple of days. 
and he must change it around right 63. now. 63. Yellow, you require 32. He's going to go over the top. Game and he does find it eventually. Play. Yellow class. It's 2-2, two, two, but only just. It didn't look likely after the second one, did it? We both looked at each other did here. It's Lucas going, to throw first. He Game on. That, and he did. We must stop doing this because we, we keep ending up with egg on our face here, Nico. Yes, we do. If there was a title tonight for most darts on the wire of double 16 in a leg, yellow would win it by a mile. 40. He would dearly love to be part of that Champions Week again. 93. I know how much he wants to get back to the tour so he can try and qualify for things like the World Match Play again, which is coming up in the next 10 days. 96. But he has had a successful season so far. And we're only halfway through. It's going to be a great summer. Really can't wait for Champions Week. We've already got some fabulous talents in there. And five nations already represented. 65. One of those nations is the Netherlands. Barry Van Peer, one week six. 40. Just how key is it that Venix got the darts here? 80. I think it's massively important. I think the pressure will be under now on the 120. Lucas should require 120. Glasson having a double trouble visit. He's got the biggest finish of the week. And it's the biggest of the lot. Double top. He's getting a nod of approval. 100. But he hits the marker instead Yellow, of dodging it. 89. And 32 this time play. does Yellow not classroom. get missed by the Cobra. One more leg for him. And he will be through it's Yellow to throw with a game to spare. Game his game against Fallon Sherrick in game six would be a group winner. Eliminate, well, not an eliminator, a decider. And we would see the back of Vanig. First person eliminated. 140. And we're class of being on three, even if Vanig does come through and win 4 3. 140. Then we know nine dart eliminator. We all want to see them. We all want the excitement of the nine dot shootout. One hundred. They are quite rare and horrible to play in. One hundred. We had a shootout, the Six Nations, where yeah, the five of you just threw three darts added that, together. That sounds terrible. I can't imagine the pressure. It is if you're up number one. Yellow, you require 120. The pressure will be off if Klassen finds this then. 64. And he misses the 18. Lucas should require 161. He might just have cost himself a match winning dart that he needs. He's only going to get two now by the looks of it. 64. Yellow, you require 57. He needs a third. It's all about missing the single in the previous visit. Game but he doesn't shot. need another and one. Match. Yeah, Klassen, Klassen wins by four legs to two. And twice tonight, it's Vainig who loses by that margin. And he's the first person eliminated from the week nine finals. He did improve his statistics in that game. But Klassen got all the best spots. He got, what was it, nine more darts at double in that match? And he wins it by four legs to two, sending him through to the semifinals.
this is the Motor Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth. I'm joined by Paul Nicholson. We have just seen Yella Klaassen get the better of Lucas Feenig to book his spot along with Fallon Sherrick's spot in the semi-finals. Lucas Feenig, I think it's fair to say we expected to see a little bit more from him tonight. Yeah, I think so. I think he struggled a little bit at times with darts slipping out of his hand. It is quite humid in here, but you've got to make the most of the, the situation. Unfortunately, his group had to see somebody fall by the wayside and it was Lucas this time but I know he'll be back and I know he'll want to try and get another title under this roof. Yeah let's have a look then at the results so far this evening. Cam Crabtree already through, already topped the group one table. Really impressive as well when we spoke to him a little while ago how much he's been studying the players in his group because he was saying David Davis I knew how many big finishes he'd taken out this week. I knew I couldn't lay up at any point in this group really impressive attitude yeah i think sometimes you need to know the player that you're playing against and this whole thing about playing the board and not playing the player it's absolute poppycock <laughs> because you do need to play the player you need to do the right things against certain opponents he knows because of david's finishing this week that you could not leave him on any shot and when he had a shot himself he had to take it he's been better than anybody else in the group so far but he's only halfway there yeah those big finishes weren't there for david in his opening match how much do you think he's learning about the difference of the finals night atmosphere here you'll be learning at a meteoric rate and when you are learning you've got to be succeeding as well there's no pressure on him because he's the only person who hasn't been here on a saturday night before but he will expect from himself that's what this is all about. Yeah, let's take a look then before we get back into the action at next week's players, the players who are going to be taking part in week 10. Who stands out for you? Daryl Pilgrim, of course, is here tonight making the most of his time off before taking part on Monday. I'm not just saying this because he's here, 
but that group is all about Daryl Pilgrim. He's played on the European Tour this year. He's played some superb darts in this room, in Southampton and in other places. There he is. He's the man with the Harvey Two-Face haircut. I absolutely love him. I think he's brilliant. He's a great player. And with all due respect to everybody else, including players like Darren Johnson, his good pal Martin Turner, who we'll see in Group B, Former weekly champion and Adam Mould has had a very big week signing with a manufacturer as well. Really big congratulations to him for that. But Pilgrim is the man for next week. But the one to watch out for is Chris Wickenden. He's been playing some really good stuff lately. So if you're looking for an outsider, it's probably him. Yeah, and he really improved the last time we saw him here on debut. He really settled into the challenge when John Worsley as well is worth a mention because he'll come here with a lot of confidence after what he did last time he was Yes, here. absolutely. When you talk about people who have succeeded under this roof, they will expect to do it again. And I'm glad you brought him up, actually, because if we didn't, John will be getting in touch with me saying, why didn't you mention me? Well, there you go, John. We've just mentioned you. There we go. We can get back into the action now that we have mentioned John Worsley. Let's get our final Group 1 match underway, then. Yeah, thanks, guys. A little insight into what you can look forward to seeing next week. Group A stuff obviously all starts 9.30 Monday morning. But we have some business to sort out here on finals night on Saturday. So this is a winner takes all shootout. First leg, it's David to throw first. We'll Game go on. through to the semi-final. The loser, well, he'll be heading home. A little more experience under their belt. 100. One hundred and twenty three. Well, this is a big game, isn't it? It's an eliminator. Effectively, we're getting into knockout darts. Nice. Couple of games early, Scott. Yeah, exactly as I described it as you were walking down from the balcony. This really is a winner-takes-all match. One hundred. We'll see the semi-finals. Loser will be heading home. We've already got Lucas Vanig out of uniform in the front row, sitting next to Robin Baker. So that could be the corner for the person who loses this match. AC3. Now, these two have already got history this week. They've played three times. Landman is 2-1 up. One hundred and But the second victory was an eliminator in Group A. They played the very last game on Wednesday. And if Landman beat David Davis, he won 125. Group A. It happened. Christian if it had been the other way around, Davis would have got here a couple of days in advance. Double 10. Game shot on the first Big finish and a 12 dart from Landman. Landman. Against the throw as well. We spoke about Landman's form this year. Second we spoke leg, about his averages and he's started to see some of his highest averages from this year. And those 140 shot outcomes off the back of those 100. Conf that confidence. His nickname, The Countryman, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. It's something to do with the fact that he is from the sticks in the Netherlands. Yeah, pretty much. So that's what I'm led to believe. He's, he's, he lives in the middle of the country, so he's the countryman. That is a beautiful Easy country. Try. Fairly flat, but one of the best produce growers in all of Europe. They have some beautiful flowers, fruits, vegetables. Yeah, it's obviously the tulips are the ones that come to mind, but 40. they don't have many ski jumpers because the, the country is that flat. They do have some really good swimmers, some fabulous cyclists, 60. and some very good speed skaters as well. Yeah, they do. Very much so. I was just about to say you were going to miss speed skating, but he didn't. Top knowledge, Nico. Top knowledge. Have you got a favourite Dutch sports star from times 134. gone by? Uh, <laughs> no, not really, because most of the, the, the sports stars I know are mainly, are mainly darters. So I, I'd have to say Barney, I suppose. I don't know. I was a big fan of Piet van den Hoogenband. He was a swimmer and he was going head to head with the likes of Ian Thorpe around 20 years ago. Now you mention him, I do remember him, yeah. 
45. Christian require 160. Everything is going the way of Landman so far. And as 42. we now have Sherrick Classen, Crabtree in the semis. Those semis are starting to look stacked. And if Landman's there as well. 137. Christian requires 74. To double the lead. He needs double 16. Game shot on the second leg. What he wants, Chris he Landman. gets. And this is a really strong second game from Chris, who's had a bit of a break since game number one. Third leg, it's David to throw first. Game on. It hasn't affected his form. In fact, he's improving. Losing 4-3 to Crabtree in a high, high quality game to start us off tonight. He averaged 93.71 and 45. his doubles percentage was decent. Just didn't get enough opportunities to get the job done. 85. Now, what do you think going, as a player, Nico, what do you think is going through Davies' mind at this moment? He's, he's already lost the game. He's now 2-0 down in this one. He's going to have to really dig deep, isn't he? Yes. Very, very deep. Considering 58. he doesn't have any experience of playing here on a Saturday night before. He'll be learning about himself in a very large way. 100. I don't know David. I haven't spoken to him. He's come across as very confident and positive all week long. But even at this stage, you can afford 60. a couple of negative thoughts to come in. Thoughts like, this might not be my night. And that does 60. happen. And that does happen. And on the, on the, op the opposite side to that is when the likes of Cam Crabtree are hitting a one five six right in the corner. You then can convince yourself that it is your night. Correct. Like Chris Mason always says, if your name's on pot, lad. 59. And we do have a pot. Somebody will be hoisting the weekly trophy 140. at around about 11 o'clock tonight. It could be a 3-0 lead for Landman. He's been hovering around that 100 average the whole game. 92. Christian require 116. Double 18. 98. And Chris is only one of two players who are here tonight who have not registered a three-figure average this week. The other one is Cam Crabtree. And they could be the two people coming through this group. 59. Chris should require 18. Double nine. Game and he's almost the there. Third lay. Chris Landman. Lucas Vanig could have a bit of company on that bench Probably next to the to stage in the Game shape on. of David Davis pretty soon because that double break means that Chris is very close to being 99. in knockout scenarios at the end of the night. From 10 o'clock. Just hasn't clicked for David tonight. 27. Averaged 81 in his first game against Cam Crabtree. And this one, unfortunately for him, is a little bit less than that. 140. And Landon came out with intentions. And he really hasn't let David get away with anything. It does feel in this game 100. as if Landman has put pressure on him in a big way since the very first visit. Yeah, that I would agree with. 41. He's the kind of player that can do that because he plays so quick. He does get that hot start. He's all over you. For quite a few years, he was seen as a good player. Someone who would make a world championship. 84. Not really seen as someone who would possibly go deep in a big event. But I think making the quarterfinals of the 2020 championship at the Indigo. I think that changed something for him. He got a 170 finish in that tournament as well. I'll take your word for that. I really will. 80. Lamb Christian now looking at 81, 81 for the match. And a very convincing win. Over to you, Chris. 
57. He has another visit in the bank. Maybe tonight is all about experience for David. 98. Because his elimination required 24. is imminent. Game and Chris's shot. progression is confirmed. Chris a 4-0 win for the man from the Netherlands. And he gets a 3-1 margin against his Welsh opponent this week. That means that Landman is going to be second in Group 1. And he will play a little bit later in the semi-finals. As for David Davis, his first Saturday night is not fruitful. But I'm sure we'll see him again. We've got another game coming up for you next. It's Yella Klassen against Fallon Sherrick to determine who wins Group 2.
Welcome back to finals night here at the Moda Super Series. We now know our semi-finalists for tonight's action. David Davis beaten in our last match by Chris Landman. He advances through to the semi-finals along with Crabtree from Group 1, Yella Klaassen, and Fallon Sherrick are the two to advance from Group 2. Scott Mitchell alongside me. First of all, who's impressed you the most so far tonight? I think Lamb's been good there, coming from bouncing back from a loss. You know, he's he's been losing that first game all week, and it wasn't a surprise to us when he lost to Cam Crabtree. But he bounced back then, and that was a convincing win and a winner takes all match. Yeah, why do you think it is that Landman's taken a game or two to settle in every day's play so far this week? I can kind of understand it tonight when you've been out of here for two days and everybody else has been playing, but I'm not sure maybe during the start of the week, but then there's no rush in that Group A. You get so many games, so if you lose your first one, it's, it's no disaster. Yeah, and of course, our next match is the final group match before the semi-finals take place. Yella Klaassen and Fallon Sherrick playing to determine who finishes top of Group 2, and that will, of course, determine who plays who in the semi-finals. Would you prefer to finish first or second in Group 2? Who would you rather take on in the semi-finals? <laughs> You're asking me about two of my friends now. I probably, if I'm honest, I probably want to be runner-up and take on Cam, if I'm totally honest. Uh, looking the way that the last game went and how convincing that was. But we know no two games are the same. I, I, I think also there's something to be said about not worrying about where you go. The fact that if you go in with a win under your belt, that is probably the better way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. All these players, of course, looking to claim the £5,000 prize and a place in Champions Week. Let's have a look at the players who have already qualified for Champions Week, where they'll have the opportunity, of course, to scoop the £20,000 first prize. It seems like quite a long while ago now, doesn't it, that Danny Lauby became the winner of Week 1. Luke Littler, of course, last weekend with the 118 average in the final in getting the better of Bartons. Who stands out for you in that? Well, it's, it's difficult not to say Luke Littler, really, because of what he did last week. And I was actually on comms last week when he did it. And Mason and I, five 180s in four legs, Mason and I were just looking at each other at times, not being able to speak. Um, Neil Duff's in the mix, obviously. He's world champion currently still. You can never rule out a world champion. I don't like to anyway. I thought Steve West was great in his week. When he won that week, he looked like he was going to win it from dart one. It's just such a difficult thing to say who's going to do it. And we've still got four to go in there anyway. Yeah, Barry Van Peer as well. He has to be in contention for the best player without a tour card at the moment. He's been playing such good darts on the Challenge Tour. He's going to be a huge threat as well, isn't he? Yeah, I've, I've played him in a final on the Challenge Tour and he was great in that final and he just he did enough of what he needed to do. He's playing with a lot of confidence at the minute and this type of thing he seems to really enjoy. Just finally, before we get back into the action, you picked Chris Landman as your winner before a dart had been thrown tonight. Are you changing that prediction? No, not at the moment. You know, I'm still going to sit on the fence. No, no, I, I, I think he's. if he continues to play like he's just done, then he will be very difficult to beat. Right then, let's get our final Group 2 match underway. It is Yella Klaassen taking on Fallon Sherrick. Yes, let's. And when we knew that this game was going to happen in Game 6, we all thought that this would headline because two of the biggest names in darts outside of the PDC Elite System will now clash to see who wins Group 2. They can rest assured that they will be part of the semi-finals. Yes, Yella to throw first. Game on. But here's the scenario for Yella Klaassen and Fallon Sherrick. The winner will win the group. 47. And will have a game break. They will take part in semi-final two against Chris Landman. 100. The loser of this game will stay on the board, as we say in darts and take on Cam Crabtree in the first semi-final. Like Scott was saying, with Abby Davis on the balcony just now, somewhere deep inside, you might want to play a 60. certain person, but the most important thing is to remain undefeated on the night. That's what they all want. Win four games, it's your £5,000 check. 
And let's face it, we want to see big games like this. Big reputations 44. going head to head. And there is a risk, of course, that these two could play each other in the final later if they get through their semis. 25. There's no guarantee of that. It could indeed be the other way around. It could be a rematch of Crabtree and Landman from game 93. one. 93. Or something else. 97. Klassen has the darts in this one because he didn't have the darts in the previous game in the group. He's played 26 games 60. this week. Yelly requiring 96. Coming fourth in Group A and winning Group C. 87. But he hasn't won leg one right there. Can you require 144? This was the finish that changed the week for Sherrick. And it's not going to happen again. 84. Yellow, you require nine. Double four. One. And Klassen does Fallon, not take the lead. 60. Double top for Fallon. For a break of throw. 40. It's a bit of a Yellow, messy first leg spot. Yeah, she was unlucky there with that second dart. It caught the other flight and diverted it. Game shot Yellow, on the first Yellow leg. looks to have gone back Yellow to Yellow from the start of the week there, the way that he's doubling out on this first leg. He really doesn't like playing on this stage in this Second heat. Leg, it's Fallon to throw You don't first. need to be a card player to realise just how uncomfortable he is. It's not a laughing matter. I was talking to him in Graz, Austria at the 39. end of August. Sorry, the end of April. I'm getting my months mixed up. And that was searingly hot on that stage. But the practice room was quite 95. cold. And I said to him, were you really that uncomfortable up there? And he said, I hate playing in the heat. It's because he's always hot no matter what the conditions are. He'd rather play in Falsy cold conditions because he can handle them better. He's a lucky fella if he's like that. I remember playing one time in... 97. Uh, at Butlins at Minehead and, and it was unbelievably cold in the room, in the venue, but the players' room was heated. And then I think we have role reversal here where we have air conditioning in here in the players' room to keep the playing room cool. And when you go out into... What is tonight the auditorium with extra extra people and extra bodies in? I, it does make it sweltering. It is a challenge. But if everybody could do it, they'd all be here. 57. Pretty cold at the top of Mount Everest. If it was room temperature, everybody would do it. 65. I have to be honest. When I, I used to deal with it at the lakeside by having... A size bigger on my shirt. I know a lot of you are laughing at home right now at that comment. 43. Do they come bigger yeah, than the one that you need? But yes, I would have a size bigger on, on the shirt. I think that's really smart. 97. People who go hiking have shoes that are one size bigger or half a size bigger because your feet will swell in the heat. You've got to do what's right 80. for you. Under these certain conditions. Now, yeah, the fact that Sherrick has had two darts rejected from the board already, we'll just watch out for that. Game shot on the because second Because she's now 2-0 down. Yellow Klassen. Third leg, it's Yellow to throw envisage first. Game on. A scenario where <laughs> Klassen will be hoping that he can take a portable fan on stage just to keep himself cool in between throws, but he doesn't give himself that much time anyway. I'd him, down, I'd him down as a cool bloke anyway, you know what I mean? He's one of those. 180. Where's the hottest place you've ever played? Is it Lakeside? 58. Yeah, yeah, probably. I think at times it, it's got up to 40 degrees. See, and, and to try and to try and tell you how it felt. 40. I remember hitting a 180 and turning to the crowd and everybody cheering and the heat of their breath hit you like somebody blowing a, a heat fan at you, if that makes sense, you know, with those turbo heaters. It's um, And that's how warm it can get there. It can be to do with the bodies that are inside more than anything. In order to be a better player, 
140. What you really need to Yellow do is constantly put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Don't stay in the old comfort 89. zone. You improve you by putting yourself in uncomfortable positions. Big shot. That is no longer possible. Another trick I used to do was turn the radiators up in the room that I was practicing in, shut the 94. doors, and try and get Yellow, the degree of heat 75. up to 38, 39 degrees, just for the couple of hours I was practicing. Double top. Game shot right in the, the third corner. Day. Yellow Classen. Well, here's the thing about Saturday night. Everybody Four wants to be the person the holding first. the trophy at the Game end. On. But this is not a knockout scenario, this game. You can't afford to lose this. But if Sherrick does lose, 100. she would have to take on Cam Crabtree in the next game, which would minimize 99. the amount of time between this game and the next. Yeah, as I said to Abby on the balcony, I think the better play is to go through having just won your last game to give you that confidence. 80. And also the darts. That's the third one that Fallon's had fall out there in three legs. Ninety-four. It can't be ignored. Three darts out of the board could be as much as 180 points. 137. Some players have really struggled with that in their careers. In fact, Dave Chisnell at the minute who was playing really 56. well on the PDC Pro Tour. He's having a real problem with it. 98. Luke Litter last week said, going back to the heat conditions, that he had to use a short stem in the heat. Because the venue was so warm, his dart flew different. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that wise for a 16-year-old kid? Fallon, you require that is 56. way ahead of schedule type of thinking. Well, that's 21 for now. I saw that moving. That nearly hit the flight. Go Game and get them quickly. The fourth play. Fallon Sherrod. Well done. She has held herself together so well in this match, even though she's 3-1 down. Fifth play. Those darts on the floor Game on. and that tricky treble seven just there, that would have befuddled many a weaker player mentally. 59. It's one of her new strengths, if you think of all the attention that she's had of late. How you deal with that? One hundred and eighty. It's not as if that attention 56. is going to go away in the next couple of weeks, because two weeks on Sunday, she will try to defend her women's world match play title at the Winter Gardens 100. in Blackpool. It's not as if she's got someone in round one or the quarterfinals, we should say, that hasn't got any experience. She's only got Lisa Ashton. And everybody's looking forward to that day. 180. Except the two players involved, probably. They've got the pressure. We can sit back and watch. Or indeed listen. 94. Fallon, you require 41. What a leg from Sherrick. Game One of her the best legs of the week. Fallon Sherrod. Because she did get a 10 dart last night to finish proceedings. She had an 11. Uh, Sixth leg. It's Fallon to throw It could first. have been 11. It's a 12. I think I know what I'm going to buy yellow for Christmas. A towel. I'm amazed he hasn't got one on the stage. One That's another one. 80 80. from Sherrick. That's a fourth in the game. 134. It's almost as if she refuses to lose tonight. She was in so much trouble at 3-0 down. 41. She's definitely refusing to go away in this game. That's for sure. 59. What she's doing for Yella right now is making him feel even more uncomfortable. And you've got experience of playing in countries like Japan, Australia, 42. China. 
you play in different humidities, different heats, different air flows, that kind Basically. of thing. You might think that we're crazy mentioning that, but it's so true. Klassen has played in Australia a couple of times, as has Sherrick. And this is such an intricate sport where the 60. air conditioning must be turned off when the game is on. And even if it's 45 degrees outside, that's still the case. 44. Easy you know five. how you were saying about your shirt being a little bit bigger at Lakeside? Yep. I think one of the best tactics that Klassen could employ in these heat conditions that he doesn't 50. really like Fallon, you're is to find something that gives him little bits of comfort, whether it's a frozen towel or something that gives him a little bit of respite. 68. Yellow, you require 130. This is to win, not just the match, but the group. 65. Fallon, you require 25. Fallon won't have the darts in leg seven if she takes out double eight. Game but she will have a chance to win four straight legs. Fallon, it has been a game of two halves. Seven and final leg. It's Klassen Yellow was to the captain first. at the first half, but since then... Fallon has been in charge. AC one. And that's a poor last dart from Klassen there. From the situation that he was in. 60. One of the trade-offs of having darts the way that she has is that sometimes you get those 60 scores 100. where everything is knitted so close together. Right on that top wire. It's one of the reasons why she's such a good 180 hitter. Because she can glue them together. Like that. That's number five. She's now got the same amount of 180s that Luke Little had in last week's final. Albeit with a few more legs. 140. Indeed. But can you imagine a scenario where Sherrick hits five 180s? 91. And loses. We have to give Yella credit here. Yeah, stuck in there and he's back. Fallon's 60. 180 with a 140. Fallon, 170. Now he's got a 60 on a pinhead. It's Sherrick for the 170. Everybody held their breath. 134. And now she holds hers. Yeah, because Klassen gets another chance to win the group. For the second consecutive leg, he does not get a shot. 80. To take it. Fallon, you're but she does. 36. Game and she wins the group. And the match. Fallon so it's Klassen who will come back in semi-final number one to take on Cameron Crabtree. As for our second semi-final, it's going to be Sherrick, the second time group winner of the week because she won group B as well. She'll take on Chris Landman in semi-final number two. And that will come in about 20 minutes time.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team off the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon.
Welcome back to finals night here at the Moda Super Series. Fallon Sherrick, you topped Group B. You have now topped your group on finals night. You must be thrilled with the way you're playing at the moment. Yeah, no, I'm very happy with how I'm playing tonight. You know, especially that game I've just played against Yellow. You know, I didn't want to lose 4-0 and then all of a sudden my 180s go out of nowhere. So it's always nice to know I have that game in the back of me. If I, and I, if I need it to come to the fore, you know, to come on board, it will come. Yeah, five 180s in that match against Yellow Class. And you said you didn't want to lose 4-0. It was very, very hot up there, though, wasn't it? And playing a player who is as quick as Yellow, you must have really felt it. No, yeah, definitely. It is really hot in here today. Um, but I think that's probably why all four of us have got through, because we're quite fast. Um, and we don't have time to think, really, and hold the dart too much. We just literally let it go. And because of the heat, it's, you know, just slipping out of the hand, and it's all just going where we want. And these conditions suit you perfectly because you're preparing for your return to the Winter Gardens, <laughs> which is pretty hot itself, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's no way to prepare other than playing in this sauna tonight because that's exactly what it's going to be like when we go up to Blackpool. And look, we spoke in Hildesheim. You picked up your first Women's Series title of 2023 there. You must be feeling that your game is exactly where it needs to be, but your mindset as well seems so different in 2023. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, my mindset is a lot more stronger and it's a bit more positive now uh, than what it was. And yeah, now my game is getting to where I want it to be. You know, there's still a little bit that I need to sort out. You know, my finishing, I'm still not 100% with it at the moment um, because I'm missing darts that I'm thinking, okay, right, you've had three clear darts. You shouldn't be using all three darts, especially missing them doubles. So I know what to go back and practice on. But yeah, no, mentally, I'm more, you know, stronger than what I've been in the past year. And how much is it helping you to elevate your game, knowing that the likes of Bo Greaves, there are so many other youngsters coming through on the women's series, Makuru playing better than she has for a very long time time how much does that help you to elevate your level as well no it definitely helps because obviously you can't have a bad game against these people it just makes you push your game better and you know you, you know you've got to go hit 90 pluses against them because if you go and hit like 70s or 80s then you're just going home there's no way you're going to win them uh, so it definitely helps you know your game get better yeah, absolutely. And picking up that first title, I know that Corinne Hammond said to me that she'd spoken to you prior to that saying, you have to win a title this weekend so that I think that you're the favourite to win in Blackpool. Did that help you get over the line? Um, I'm not sure what she told you, but they weren't exactly the words that she said to me when she was waiting at the table before I played my final. Um, but yeah, no, winning that first title, you know, it's made a boost in my confidence again. You know, I'm back to, I know I can win and, you know, I'm looking forward to go in and play in every game that I'm playing now, especially I'm still here tonight, I'm still in, I'm still going to try and win. But yeah, no, um, yeah, Corinne did give me some really <laughs> nice words before I went. I'm sure they were really, really <laughs> polite and friendly. We can't repeat them right now, of course. But when you All look positive. At, yeah, absolutely. When you look at 2023, the start, I remember speaking to you at Q School. What is it about your mindset that's changed? Because you are playing with such freedom, you're playing with a smile on your face again. What was it that changed? There's less pressure. I, I, I think that's exactly what it is because obviously, you know, there's other women doing more in the game at the moment than what I am. And I am openly admit that, you know, I'm not winning all these titles at the moment and all eyes are on Bo and Makuru and Lisa. So everyone's kind of just kind of pushed me to the side because they're not expecting me to do anything. So like now I'm like, OK, I can go under the radar again. I can enjoy my darts again and I don't feel as much pressure anymore. And tonight you've got Chris Landman in the semi-finals. How much are you looking forward to that challenge? No, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I know how well Chris can play. You know, I remember playing at the BDO when he played at BDO. I know he's a really good quality player and that's the game, you know, that I'm here to play. I want to play these players that are going to push me. And, you know, even if I had to play Yellow and Cam Captree, you know, all, all the players in tonight are going to push me and they're going to give me a game. So, yeah, I'm really happy. Absolutely. Right then, we will be back at 10pm for the semi-finals here at the Week 9 Finals Night. We look forward to seeing you then.
Hello and welcome along to finals night here at the Moda Super Series. We have already completed our six group games and we have our semi-finalists for tonight's action. Yella Klaassen, Fallon Sherrick, Chris Landman and Cam Crabtree have all made their way through to the final four. Let's find out just how they did it. anxiety feeling coming into a Saturday night as opposed to the group stages earlier in the week? Well, it kind of starts with the back room. The, the, the players' oh, room no, changes. You know, there's, there's, there's money there for grabs. And it's all or nothing. And Game show on the first oh, line. What a finish that is to start off from Landman. Cam, you require 156. This will be seismic. Double 18. Game it's absolutely the wonderful. Play. The timing Cam of Crabtree. that shot has just shaken Landman, and he might just again lose his first game of the day. Cam, you require They can be separated by two points in the entire match. Was that meant to be a six? It doesn't matter. Because game he wins shot. the game against the, the darts. Cam and Crabtree. Landman now has a break before he returns in game five. And if he was to lose that one, the group A winner would be out. Fallon, you require 60. Sherrick, no hesitation. Straight in for the shot. Game and shot straight the into that 2-0 lead. Fallon, Sherrick. Fallon, you require 60. Is it joy for Sherrick? Game you bet it is. And the match. She starts four Fallon legs to Sherrick. two. And she's halfway to winning group two as well. To stay in this group one match. Double 11. Game he shot pounced the this time. David Davis. Constantly wiping his hands though. Cam, you required From 20. Davis the last couple of days. Crabtree. Game wins again. Shots and the match. He wins group Cam one Crabtree. and he now has over an hour off before he returns in the first semi-final. They've both done it before. Doesn't quite like that one because the flight is kicked left. Game he's got around the first it. Leg. Wonderful Lucas first Vainig. shot. 17 darts for the first leg. Game and 32 this time leg. does the not get missed by the Cobra. And 32 this time play. does Yella not Klassen. get missed by the Cobra. Yellow, you require 57. He needs a third. It's all about missing the single in the previous visit. Game but he shot. doesn't need another and one. Match. Klassen, Klassen wins by four legs to two. And twice tonight, it's Beenig who loses by that margin. Chris, you require one. If it had been the other way around, Davis would have got here a couple of days in advance. Double 10. Game shot on the first Big finish play. and a 12 dart from Landman. Landman. Game and Chris's shot. progression and is confirmed. Chris Lambert. A 4-0 win for the man from the Netherlands. Certain conditions now. Yeah, the fact that Sherrick 60. has had two darts rejected from the board already. We'll just watch out for that. Game shot on the because second Because she's now 2-0 down. Yellow Klassen. Try and get Yella, the you degree of heat 70 up to 38, 39 degrees. Just for the couple of hours I was practicing. Double top. Game shot right on the, the third corner. Yellow Klassen. 3 Klassen. Fallon, you but she does. 36. Game and she wins the group. And the match. Fallon so it's Klassen who will come back in semi-final number one. Yeah, remarkable from Fallon Sherrick yet again to reel off those four legs there. Paul, I think it's fair to say regardless of what happens from here on out, she is going to go to Blackpool with a lot of confidence. I think the way she summarised her performances tonight and the week with you on the balcony just before uh, 10 o'clock summed up how aware she is of her strengths and weaknesses right now. There are a lot more strengths right now than weaknesses, but she knows there are things to work on, but she's definitely trending in the right direction. Yeah, David Davis, we spoke about it. We can have a little look at the results so far. It just didn't happen for him tonight. The big finishes that have been there for him all week just wasn't able to replicate that tonight on finals night. He was steady all week, and I really did expect him to come here and do very similar tonight. It is warm in here tonight. He does use a smooth dart, and I know he had a few problems with the grip, but it didn't just happen for him tonight, and he, he'll be back, I'm sure, and, and have learned a lot this week. Yeah, and really interesting to hear Fallon say that the quicker players have got through for a reason, and that reason is because of the heat. 
Yeah, maybe. I think uh, these players have got a lot of experience, so they should be uh, not adverse to playing in these kind of conditions. Dart players love an excuse. <laughs> I'm not giving them any. It's a case of get on this hockey, do your best. If you can be okay with the conditions, then you will do well. Now, when it comes to Sherrick, she could have easily said, you know what, I'm 3-0 down against class and I'm through anyway. But her ability to just say no to the fact that she could have lost that match, it was astounding. But don't forget about Chris Landman. He looked really comfortable in that second game. He certainly did. Let's have a look then at the group tables. It was, of course, Crabtree who was the first player to advance through to the semi-finals. How impressed were you, Scott, with him, his performances, and not just that, the way he'd assessed what his opponents were capable of doing before playing them? He wasn't letting a lot get to him tonight, and we know that Chris wasn't starting very quick all week. And maybe Cam knew that and knew that that was a good chance to get him and get a head up in the group. Yella Klaassen, we know that he doesn't like playing in these conditions. Do you think he's going to be able to have enough about him to put that to the back of his mind tonight? I sincerely hope so, because even though he hasn't played his best start for probably 98% of this week, he's been grafting really well. If he's going to get the title tonight, he's going to have to continue to do that. It's as simple as that. But first and foremost, before a dart has even practised on this stage in the semi-finals, say to yourself in the mirror, I'm OK with this heat. I don't like it, but I've got to be OK with it. Yeah, quite interesting as well to hear Fallon Sherrick say off air when I spoke to her on the balcony. She expected to see Lucas Veenig advance to the semi-finals this evening. Didn't quite happen for him either. No, he's another one that he's been here before and it just didn't quite work. It, when, you, when you lose that first game, I've been here on a Saturday night, it is so hard to, to, to rejig yourself because you're back on so quickly. And tonight it just didn't quite work for him, but I'm sure that we're going to see him again. One, one bad game doesn't make you a bad player. It certainly doesn't. Let's have a look then at the semi final lineup that we are going to be bringing you very shortly. It is, of course, Cam Crabtree taking on Yella Clarsen up first. Cam's had quite a bit of a wait an hour and 20 minutes before this semi final gets underway. What would you be advising him to do in that time? I think when he was talking to you on the balcony once again, he was trying to stay in cool conditions. He doesn't want to use up any physical sort of endurance by staying in the heat. I might have gone for a walk just to try and get some air. Uh, at this time of night, it will have cooled down a little bit outside, but then give yourself enough preparation time to feel sharp when you come into the semis. And who do you think comes through that semi-final? Oh, why do you do this to me? <laughs> Every single time. So you should be expecting it. I am going to go for Crabtree, but only just. I think it's because of the conditions. I think he's handled them just a little bit better, but any result won't shock me. Yeah, our second semi-final, of course, sees Fallon Sherrick taking on Chris Landman. When you look at that one, Fallon Sherrick coming into this, you did say it was so important to end the group phase with a victory. She's done so in quite remarkable fashion. She has done, and, and when we said at the top of the show that we thought it was going to be those two in the final, well, that now can't be because they're, they're in the semi-final. So one of us is going to be right and one of us is going to be wrong after the semis. It's quite incredible, isn't it, to see her playing with this level of freedom as well. She openly admits it's because there isn't that pressure on her shoulders with the likes of Bo Greaves and Mikuru Suzuki picking up titles in women's series events. It is fantastic to see her now just playing to the best of her ability again. Well, she is, and she's having to because the other ladies are stepping it up, I believe. I think she's got to go with it. Um, you know, she's been the trailblazer and the leader, and, uh, but she's got to go with it. And she's doing that, and I think she's going into the match play, for me, probably in the peak of her form. Yeah, and it shows how much she expects of herself as well, doesn't it? Because she was quite critical of her finishing when I spoke to her a little while ago. It shows that she demands the best from herself. She should as well. She is one of the greatest lady players of all time. And when you talk about ladies' darts right now, it's really hot. With Bo, with Mikuru, with Lisa, with Fallon, with plenty of others starting to come through as well. She's created this little monster that we have. Ladies' darts has always been fabulous to watch, but now it's a very different proposition. And there's different pressures on these ladies to perform. And particularly when you have the somewhat celebrity that Fallon has. Yeah, that's a really good point. I'm going to come to you both with this. Who are your finalists tonight? I'm, I'm, I'm saying Crabtree and, and Lamb, and I think. Yeah, Paul? I'm going to go... Crabtree and Sherrick, but that second semi-final, it could be anything. That is just such a good game. It's worthy of a final. It certainly is. Well, we have seen some really fantastic finishes over the course of our six days here at the Super Series. Let's have a look at some of the best ones.
Lucas Vanig reeled in the big fish in Group B last night. Maybe not the most significant three-figure out shot of the week, but always impressive. Robin Vega will have learned a lot from his week at the Super Series. He took out some impressive finishes against Klaassen too. A 127 in Group A, this 130 later in the week. As for Fallon Sherrick's 144, well, it was a real tie turner in her match against Davis on Thursday as she looked to put down a real marker. It wasn't to complete a nine, but Chris Landman taking out this 141 was also pretty impressive, helping him on his way to a third successive win of the day. But in terms of significance, this was pretty humongous from Davis to back up a 13 dart break. He went on to win that match 4-3. Yeah, and don't forget, you can tweet us with your favourite checkout of the week. We will be discussing the winner of that a little bit more later on. Of course, we did have a contender tonight as well, didn't we? Cam Crabtree with a stunning 1-5-6 in his opening game of the evening. He's in action next in our first semi-final, taking on Jella Klaassen, who lost 4-3 to Fallon Sherrick last time out, having led that one 3-0. To see how this one unfolds then, let's return to our commentary team. Thank you, Abby. It's knockout darts time here on Saturday night, live on Sporty first Stuff TV and the Motor Super first. Series YouTube channel. Game on. Charlie's back as your referee. He takes charge of the last three games of the night to see who will get through to Champions Week. Heavyweight stuff here. 41. In week nine, because if you think about the history of the game, two countries... 96. I've had a big say in the history of the sport in the last three decades. England and the Netherlands. And that's exactly what you're going to get 60. in these two semi-finals. The 2006 BDO World Champion Yella Klaassen against a 19-year-old child, 85. you could say, who is up and coming and already has a great deal of confidence. Well, with the Yella being 38... 140. Crabtree is exactly half Yella's age. 125. I think my comment yesterday that Crabtree was two years old when Yella won that world title has confirmed just how young 60. some of these stars are becoming. Because it really isn't that long ago since he won that world title. 137. And in a funny sort of way, Scott, we both tipped Cam Crabtree to win this match. And if Yella Klassen will have heard that, it will fire him up. Yella, you require 58. 38. So narrow misses mean that Crabtree will come back for a potential hold in six visits. And he might need the bullseye. 41. That's a bonus for Klassen. The 41. fact that he didn't even get a shot. Yellow, you require 20. Yeah, the young man should have went for the big 14 there, not tried to make sure that he had one dart 15. to get out. But Yellow... Cam, you require 24. He's now had five darts at a double this leg. He's not out. 15. This angle is tough. 18. And he misses as well. Yellow, you require five. Klassen can still break. Game and break he does. Day. Yellow He has Klassen. seen that double two a couple of times tonight. And he's hit it both times. If we look at his overall Second night leg, statistics, 30% on. on doubles, which is the worst of the lot when it comes to the semi-finalists. And 81. he has the lowest average as well for the night at 84.63. And when you consider the fact that he lost four consecutive legs in his previous match. 40. That's probably the reason why we tipped Crabtree to get the win, because of those circumstances. Well, the, the stats on the night is, looked favourable towards Crabtree, but... 
Yala left 58 after 12 in that first leg and then took a further eight darts. 60. To convert that 58, and that will be the worry. But as I've said earlier in the week, you don't worry about those longer legs once you get them. 180. And you win them and they're on your side and there's scoreboard pressure on your side. Well, we can't ignore the fact that in his career, he's 45. had some very big highs. Yeah, you require 100. But he's also had some very dark lows as well. The fact that he is still performing here 60. means he's got himself off the canvas a few times. If we're tipping against him, it's purely on statistical basis. 140. He's Yelly the one who has the darts to put egg on our face. Game and he's got a 2 0 lead. Yellowclassen. We're not only into knockout territory, Scott, we're into double Third your leg, money to throw as first. well. Game this is no game show. This is serious business. This is money in the bank. And that was a hold of throw in 14 darts. Which is a good hold of throw. Breaking 20 would be what Cam would be more concerned 180. about. 180. Something has changed because his scoring prowess over the last couple of legs has been almost 41. perfect. Instead, we said at the top of the show, if Yellow was to come through and get 96. anywhere near the final tonight, he was going to have to continue improving at the rate that he has, and he would have to come to the show. And he's been here before. 82. He's been in this situation before. He's played big games before. And he's just 180. turning up. With everything he has in this semi-final. This is an absolutely 42. remarkable yeah, display. Yeah, they require 45. Well above average for the night. Game shot and the third wonderful leg. to watch. Yellow That's an Klassen. 11 daughter. This game is barely five minutes old, and the Cobra could be in the final Fourth in the next 90 seconds. First. Game on. I go back to a game that these guys had 57. yesterday. It was a group decider. And Cam knows a thing or two about those 100. group deciders and indeed knockout scenarios on a Saturday night. Klassen won by four legs to one. That meant that 100. he won Group C. One hundred. He's got Cam in trouble. It's just a question of whether he can dig himself out of it the same way that Fallon Sherrick did. But the fact of the matter remains that Klassen is playing at a much higher level than he was against Fallon Sherrick in that last qualifying match. 140. Yellow, you require 170. It's a higher level than he's been all week, and here we go. 98. Can and you I think he's winding up as well. It's almost as if he's playing faster to save it. 97. Yellow, you require 72. To be in the final in a flash. Game that did not take long at all. Yeah, One of the classes. quickest games we've ever had at the Motor Super Series in Portsmouth. Six minutes and 42 seconds to dispatch Cam Crabtree with an average in excess of 100. And his doubles were pretty shiny as well at four out of 10. Both myself and Scott Mitchell tipped Cam Crabtree. What do we know? Yellow Classen knows a lot more because he's won that first semi by four legs to nil.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. And you can visit dartshop.tv to book your tickets. You could be here watching finals night unfold next Saturday night. Well, our first semi-final is complete. Yella Klaassen has just dismissed Crabtree in the space of six minutes and 42 seconds. I don't think many people will have predicted that, Paul Nicholson. No, I don't think so. We, we look at stats a lot and we can see what's likely for the future, but we can't predict it. And sometimes you've just got to admire the class of someone who I actually hope he heard us, because sometimes when you back against the other person, they get their back up and say, do you know what, you, you guys don't fancy me, well, I'm going to show you. That's the kind of display we just saw from Yella Klaassen. It was one of, I will not lose, not I might not lose. That was a great display, and the fact that he averaged 100.2, the same as his best performance of the whole week, in conditions that he doesn't like, says a lot about him. Yeah, and Cam shouldn't be too disheartened, should he, by what he's produced there, because he just wasn't allowed to get into that match. You can see there just the three darts at the outer ring. Wasn't able to pin any of them, but he should go to Leicester for the Pro Tour on Monday and Tuesday, full of confidence still. Absolutely, and he's got sharpness as well, playing what is it, 13 matches over three days against some good players? Let's face it, he's going to be sharp. And in round one of the Pro Tour events on Monday and Tuesday in Leicester, he's going to be a handful for somebody. But Klassen's not finished yet. He might even go to the £5,000 mountain at the end of the day. Yeah, and we look at youngsters coming through. We talk about the development tour, the challenge tour. What is it about Cam that you really like? I just think he's learning at a good rate. I don't think he's expecting everything right now. At the age of 19... I, I was making my county debut for Northumberland. Talk to Scott Mitchell about what he was doing at the age of 19. The ability to allow these young stars to grow and develop at these ages is good. But I think what we're seeing from people like Cam and, and Keen Barry and, and Luke Littler is they're doing great things, but they're still not wanting to be at the top of the biggest mountain immediately. They still want to learn. They want to, you know, see what it feels like to lose and then learn from that. And that's what Cam's doing at the minute. He's growing at a really good rate. Yeah, the future is certainly bright in the world of darts. Let's have a look who we have got here at the Moda Super Series in week 10 of Series 4. We can have a look at those players now. When you look at that list, there are so many exciting players. We've already mentioned John Worsley is going to be coming here with a lot of confidence, isn't he, given what he produced the last time we saw him here? He'll expect to win next week. I know what John is like. He, he'll come here and expect to replicate, but he's going to have a really tough thing to do in Group A, never mind the rest of the week. I know that we've got some new names in the forms of Jim Mayer and Tom Becker. Really looking forward to seeing those new talents. Who, who knows what we could unearth next week? But then we look at later in the week with some seasoned talent, the likes of Martin Turner. We've got Darren Johnson and Daryl Pilgrim, who for me is the favourite for next week because of what he's done here before. But watch out for the likes of former weekly winners Adam Mould and Chris Wickenden, who has been playing some very good stuff on the ADC Tour recently. Absolutely. Really looking forward to getting Week 10 underway. Of course, there's a lot to be determined here in Week 9 first, though. All of these players, as Nico just mentioned, playing for that £5,000 prize and a place in Champions Week. Let's have a look at the players we have already got in that Champions Week after Week 12 comes to a conclusion. There are so many exciting and interesting stories behind the names there. Barry Vampire is of course one that stands out because of what he's doing on the Challenge Tour. So many people are talking about him as one of the best in the world right now without a tour card. You'd have to say there's a lot of merit for that. Yeah, I think he is the best considering what he's done in different arenas. He's checked so many boxes. He has one great 
days on the European Tour in the PDC Elite system. He's won on the Challenge Tour and he's, he's very close to winning his Tour card back in the middle of the season. That's how dominant he's been. But I look at that and I see two things. There's a possibility of a game between Danny Lauby and Luke Littler. That could give us the quickest game we've ever had. And my pal Steve West. Yeah. I'm completely biased when I say that I want Steve to win that week because it would be fabulous to see him after losing his tour card and doing something wonderful here. Just another word on Barry Van Peer because a lot of people will remember him for what happened at the Grand Slam a number of years ago. How great is it to see the way that he's managed to get over those issues and the difference in his throw now? It seems to be working very well. Isn't it strange how some players go through that dreaded dartitis and come back stronger? We talk about it a lot. It happened with Mark Walsh. He got dartitis, came back, and he was better than he was before. It's happened to good pals of mine in county darts and Super League darts, things like that. And the ability to do that shows mental strength. But I think Barry Van Pierce taking it to another level. I think what he's doing is showing how inspirational he can be to show how others will you know, not give up with their game because predominantly what you've seen with some young people when they've got dartitis for the first time, they'll say, I'll just give up. But now they're seeing Barry Van Pier saying, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to go through the mental training. I'm going to go through my process. And now he is as good as ever. Absolutely. Well, we have three players left in the field tonight to determine who will be joining those players at Champions Week. Jelle Klaassen is already in the final. Who is going to join him? Fallon Sherrick or Chris Landman? Who is your name? I said Fallon at the top of the show. I'm not going to change my mind. But if I'm wrong twice and it's an all Dutch final, I really won't mind. It'll be really quick in the final if that's the case. Absolutely right then. Let's get our second semi-final underway. It is Fallon Sherrick taking on Chris Landman. Yeah, thanks, guys. And that's two in this half of the semi-final that we felt would be there come finals time. Only one can take their spot in the final. Well, and the 29-year-old from Milton Keynes takes on the 42-year-old from Hatton. First leg, it's Fallon to throw first. Game on. England versus Holland are always good affairs when it's football. 100. Darts, any sport really. 100. Both kick off with a ton. So both feeling very comfortable. 125. I don't know about you, Scott, but this has been one of the most unpredictable nights of finals darts that I can remember. 60. And now I'm watching the way that Fallon's throwing. I think all the pressure here is on Chris. As you can see, it is Sherrick 92. who has the darts in the odd-numbered legs by virtue of winning that Group two scenario earlier. She was 3 0 down. 100. She won 4 3. I just wonder how key that will be later in this match. 58. A lot of people thought that Landman was going to land that £5,000 check at the end of the week because of the fact that he's playing the best darts of his career to date. Fallon, you're recording in the middle part of 2023. He might still do it. With an ideal start in the semi finals. Chris, you require 61. Spoke about Fallon having a 180 and a good time in earlier. Lamman has done exactly the same here. Game shot on the first in leg lay. one. Chris Lamman. Sherrick, early doors. A little case of deja vu here because Second leg, it's earlier in qualifying first. campaign. In group one, where he came second, he landed a 61 checkout just 100. like that. He did indeed. Just to give you their nightly statistics. 57. Alan Sherrick, 87.27 for her two games. But looking at 100. everybody in the semifinals, the statistical form horse... Landman 
Easy and when one. you compare that to what he's done all week long, he's gone up a good 5% tonight. And that's what you've got to do when you're trying to get this title. And you were right when you were off on the balcony and said that we were, we look at stats to make decisions on, on what we're doing. But we don't play darts on paper. We play Easy darts five. on the board. And it doesn't matter what the stat is. And that's the joy of this game. You're only as good as your next game. 43. And I love the fact about that with darts. I just love it. There are intangibles about this game that entice me. 97. I am really impressed with how Klassen handled the conditions in that semi-final to beat Crabtree by four legs to nil. At no point in that semi did he shake his head. At no point did he waft his shirt or blow in his hands a great deal. He just accepted 43. it. Christian requires 60. And shot forward. And we have seen a lot of head shaking from him this week. 50. Like say, Fallon, you require 138. He didn't do it on that occasion. Now, Landman here is going to have to tighten up on his doubles because you really do not want to give Fallon a chance. 60. It's one Christian of the strongest parts 10. of her game is her doubling. Game shot That's on the a second shot. Leg. Chris Lambert. Two hits from five at 40%. And that's roughly what he's doing tonight. Third leg. It's Fallon to throw first. Game what on. Fallon is doing when she's getting shots. Because in the first couple of legs in this semi final, she hasn't had a shot yet. It's getting to the point where she might have to do 42. exactly what she did in that semi final. You can see that she's feeling the heat up there, though. 55. You can see the angle of entry for Fallon as those darts just kink a little bit to her right as they 90. get to the board. That is a lovely camera angle. Every time I'm here and I see that 100. camera shot, I think, what a special camera shot that is. Gives you an indication of how they will stack the darts in the scoring. Easy and that deflection, you wouldn't have seen just how violent that collision is without that camera angle. 100. It bounced so much that it almost landed in the 12. How important is it, Scott, that Fallon gets on the board 100. sooner rather than later? I know this is a very short format, but the last thing you want to do is let someone like Landman front run. 100. Yeah, she, you, you feel that she has to hold throw here because then she's against in the last leg anyway and Lamman 3 nil up with the darts in his hand 135 and that is just a super Christian response from Sherrick there 46 now which double is she going to choose 44 Fallon you require 49 usually it's a 17 here two eights and that's the department that she's acknowledged tonight that needs tightening up. And she's in trouble. 82. She was Fallon millimeters away from being 3-0 down. And she take advantage of the fact that she's giving a second bite. Oh, no. No score. Christian required 20. Of everybody in the semi-final so far... It feels like the Queen of the Palace is the one struggling with the heat the most. But Ten. Landman is not putting her away in like three. Fallon, you require 16. I think that was a case of that he couldn't believe his luck that he got back there. That's awkward. That flight is in the way. She's trying to go over the top of it. Game and she does the find a way, way. to a third dark conversion. Only just back in it. It is not about averages now. Fourth leg, it's Chris it is all about first. Bottle. Game on. You're absolutely right. We are now. This is knockout darts. And nobody ever puts the average on 24. the trophy. And look at that from Landman. He is now visibly rattled from having missed all those darts at a double himself. 96. He's missed seven. She's missed six. 115. And the person who is rubbing his hands right now 
is the 2006 BDO champ because he's already in the final. 134. He wants these two to slug it out as long as possible to sap their energies for what will be 100. a hot final. 100. Alan has given herself a lifeline. She's turned the throw here in this leg. 96. Should be Lamman's throw, really. He's turned it already. Lamman needs a double trouble visit here to get it back. 44. He, he has failed miserably there. Not even close. Not like Chris has been at all all evening. 75 there. 80. Oh, that's unfortunate. It really was hitting both barrels and squeezing into the small five. Just makes the next shot 85. a little harder. Fallon, you require 95. As our good friend Darren Webster from Norfolk would say, this is the part of the day where you need to be as cool as a cucumber. 47. But you can't find the hot spot. Pressure require 133. 59. He's starting to miss those trebles by 48. almost an inch. And it all started where after he'd missed those doubles and lost that leg to Fallon, which he feels that he should have had. Chance to compose. 24. And she misses that double 16, both low and Christian high. Christian requires 74. Can Landman land tops? 54. Oh, that one flattened out in the last second. Fallon, you required 24. It did indeed. And this will change the whole game. Game shot on and the And she fight. nails it. Fallon Sherrick. Great darts from Fallon Sherrick there. She is now back in the match. Like we said, the Fifth averages Fallon to throw first. make game no on. difference. This is all about bottle. This is all about mindset. And this is all about a best of three shootout. You know what I was saying earlier, Scott, about putting yourself in more uncomfortable situations to be ready for things like this. Fallon has been in 55. maybe more uncomfortable darting situations than anybody here tonight over the last two or three seasons. And yet, she's still 140. so uncomfortable with the conditions here. She looks like she's got a wasp stuck with a jumper. 100. Yeah, but she's, she's also relieved that she's still in the game here at 2-2 with the way those first four legs have gone and she is now asserting herself on this match. 133. Superbly. She's handling it, even though she is uncomfortable. 100. Fallon, you require 170. You take a ton here. And she gets one. Chipping away at the resistance of Landman has... He hit the 58. wall. 58. Fallon, you require 70. She's going to persevere, or is she going to change? It's a change of plan. And I think this is the right time to do this. 50. That was a much better dart at tops than some of the shots she's had in the bottom left corner. Yeah, agreed. 100. Fallon, you require 20. How are you on this secondary double? 15. That could be really costly. Chris, you require 88. Landman has missed eight darts a double in this match. Sherrick has now missed 13. Double seven. 74. This is a real scrap. But you can't Fallon, take you your eyes off five. it. It's the misses in this match that have given us the drama. One. Two wired shots at twos. Chris, you require 40. And I'm convinced that she thought that first one was in. That was a definitely lean Game towards shot the board. The fifth lay. Chris Landman. I think we can fair to say Shannon Fallon robbed one. A little Six earlier days. off of Lamman, and now Lamman has now gone and robbed it back and put himself in a position where he's throwing for the match. 100. 
He is used to winning games this week. He won 10 from 15 in Group A this week. 100. He lost his first game of the night against Cam Crabtree. He's been dispatched by his fellow Dutchman, Klaassen. 140. It's got to be good. 140. It's good enough to stay in touch. 140. Oh, that's a monstrous 140. The pressure on Sherrick now is almost too much, but is she up to it? 140. I'm not really pressure sure how she's done this, but it's all down to this man who has the first shot. He's not going to take it. 66. Fallon it's still a good visit. 121. Under the circumstances, yes, but Fallon's been and done exactly the same and hit that big one. She stays away from the flight. 81. She didn't. That was Christian lucky Pye to stay in there. This is to put her away. It's Game an all Dutch shot. final in week and nine. Match. And Fallon Sherrick falls in the final four. So it will be Landman versus Klassen. Two guys who came into tonight flying the flag for the Netherlands. And it will be a second Dutchman into Champions Week. That is guaranteed. It was a real scrap in the end. But Chris Landman eventually, after missing 11 darts at double in that semi, he's the one who progresses and goes through by four legs to two at the expense of Fallon Sherrick.
Welcome back to finals night here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. I'm joined once again by Scott Mitchell to reflect on what we've just seen in our second semi-final and, of course, to look ahead at tonight's all-Dutch affair in the final for that £5,000 prize and a place in Champions Week. Chris Landman getting the better of Fallon Cherok last time out. It looked, Scott, when he missed so many darts at the outer ring to take a 3-0 lead that it had switched in favour of Fallon Sherrick that semi. It did because Chris then really dropped off on the scoring zone uh, and allowed Fallon to get right back in. And then when she got to 2-2, two -two, I thought, here we go, she's back in this. Yeah, absolutely. Fallon Sherrick, though, in terms of preparation for a tournament, she heads to the Winter Gardens in a fortnight's time to try and defend her match play title. These conditions are very similar to what she'll experience in Blackpool. And if she's finding that she's got slippery hands and the darts are flying out of her hand, she's, she's got to find a solution. She's either got to take some sort of towel with her or um, there's, there's little rosin bags and things that you can put on your hand to take the stickiness away from your, your fingers. It, she's, she's got to work that out. She's She's only got a week to work it out. Yeah, absolutely. The final will be contested between Yella Klaassen and Chris Landman. It's Landman who won the bull in the back room. We're just getting confirmation of that. How significant do you think that's going to be in the final? Well, both players like to lead. So I, I would say it is fairly significant because if Chris can get a lead, we know that he'll go. But we know that if Yella breaks him in the first one, because that, that Yella's attitude now, now that he's lost the ball, he'll go... Best time to break is the first leg in the final. So if he can do that, then the tie turns in his favour. Yeah, and we've just seen Landman's finishing stats from his semi-final. Four out of 15, 11 darts missed at the outer ring in that semi-final from him. As for Jelle Klaassen, it was a very different story in his semi-final, wasn't it? Four out of 10 on the outer ring in that one. We're going to have a little look at those finishes now. It really was something special. Yeah, it was. And we said at the top of the show that if Yellow was going to make the final, he was going to have to continue to improve on that particular part of his game to make sure he got there. There was no bigger time to improve on that than the semi-final. Yeah, absolutely. A match that was completed in six minutes and 42 seconds. Do you think that semi-final maybe showed that Yella benefited from the roll-on, roll-off, whereas Cam Crabtree, of course, had over an hour to wait before his semi-final? There could be an element of that. I really think there could be an element of that. But I, as players, you, you're not thinking that before you go to the board. You may analyse it after you've played, but it's not something you think about before throwing. And if you were in Yella Klaassen's shoes, you know you've already booked your spot in the final. Would you have been watching that other semi-final in the back room? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I would have, I would have been practising, just kept an eye on it. R not Rather than study it and go, oh, look, he's missing doubles, or I wouldn't have overanalyzed it. I'd have tried to distance myself a little bit, but just had half an eye on it to see what the averages were. And the two players we've got in the final have spent an awful lot of time with each other this week, off the board as well as on it. How much could that play a part if they're thinking about their friendship up there? Do you think that'll affect one more than the other? I think of all the players, the Yellow's one that will be able to remove that no matter what. I, Chris can, but I think that they'll, the, the, the Dutch are very different to the way they see the game than the English do. You know, we're a couple of mates going up there and having a throw. The Dutch tend to not be like that. They're up there to go and win. And, yeah, they'll be friends in 10 minutes after, but when they're on that board, they just go at it and it's going to be a really rapid paced game as well and exciting to watch. It certainly will be. Before we get into the action though, we've had some really huge, significant finishes over the course of our six days of action here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth this week. Let's find out who has won the checkout of the week competition. Make us look silly, David. Make us look silly. We're Ain't just really silly play. because David we were wrong. Davis. It's 3-2 Davies. What a shot that is. Full respect from everybody. Yeah, that really was a fantastic checkout. I have to say, Adam Atkinson's 1-5-1, it wasn't in the competition, but that has to be up there as well because that really transformed his week around, didn't it? It did, and, and I don't think there's a person in this building that wasn't happy for Adam, uh, the way that that went in and then how he performed after. Um, so pleased for him and he can move on now, hopefully. 
Yeah, absolutely. We're going to bring Paul Nicholson into the conversation now as we preview our final, which is going to get underway very, very shortly. Paul, I've just asked Scott the same question. How much do you think it will impact these two players? And do you think it will impact one more than the other, that they are such good friends off the hockey? Well, I think Scott categorised it really well because... When it comes to Dutch dart players, they do see this in a somewhat mercenarial type of way. And knowing Jelle Klassen like I have over the last 15 or so years, his ability to detach from friendship and just go out there and win for himself, it is the way that a singles dart player should be. And it doesn't matter whether he's playing his best mate this week in Chris Landman or indeed his worst enemy, he still wants the same result. But as far as Landman's concerned, he was touted as the favourite this week because of his current form. He can probably put that semi-final behind him now. And the pace of this game is definitely going to be what we talk about. You as the kind of player who is going to easily be able to put those missed starts at double in the semi-final behind him? I think so. In previous times in other seasons, maybe he would have been dwelling on it a little bit longer. But when you consider the amount of bounce backs that he's had this year from tournament losses to tournament wins to good runs to maybe having a not so good day and the experience of playing many many games with bad starts of course in group a i think he can put it behind him and he's given enough time between that second semi-final and the final to be able to do that yeah, absolutely. Scott, as Nico just mentioned briefly there, it is a lot easier to put mistakes and bad performances behind you when you are in such good form. It is because the confidence then shines through. The thing is, the difference with this one tonight is it's such a quick turnaround. It's whether he gets to that position and he could even leave the same double that's caused him the problem. So sometimes that mindset, you, you don't think about it until you actually leave it and you go, Oh, no, not again. Don't do this again. And you can actually talk yourself back into it as quickly as you can get yourself out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Nico, just one final one. We are hearing that Chris Landman has won the bull for this final. How much of a difference do you think that will make? Difference if we go to leg seven. We've seen already two semi-finals that go against the grain, you could say, because the two group winners have lost. So maybe it's in the stars that Yellow Klassen is to, about to win against the darts. We'll find out soon enough. Is he your pick to go all the way and, and lift the trophy? Do you know what? I've spent a lot of time with Yellow over the years. And to be honest with you, I've almost been backing against him this week because of the conditions. He hasn't, hasn't been playing his best darts. But world champion qualities tend to shine through when you've got your back against the wall. Just ask Scott. Yeah, absolutely. You have to give Yella Class an immense credit because all week we've been talking about maybe he didn't come here in the best of form. He's not really been playing at his best this week, but he has saved his best for when it really matters. And that's what all good players do, all experienced players do. He's a former world champion. He knows how to do it. It's just remembering how you did it. Yeah, absolutely. We are just moments away from getting this final underway. So I'm going to ask you now, who is your winner? I know you've been sticking firm with Chris Landman. I'm sticking firm with Chris Landman. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you think the score's going to be in this one? Oh, it's going to be tight. It's going to be 4-3, four, 4-2. Four, it's, it's going to go to the end. Absolutely. Right then, let's get things underway, shall we? It is time for our Week 9 final of this. Amazing. It's been an absolutely incredible night of action. Let's get underway. It is Jelle Klaassen taking on Chris Landman. Thank you, Abby. And that is what they're playing for tonight. A very shiny trophy. And what you want to get on said shiny trophy are fingerprints. Your fingerprints and nobody else's. But this is a game that both players will be comfortable with. Don't go anywhere because it could be over in as little as six to seven minutes if that semi-final between Klassen and Cam Tr Crabtree is anything to go by because his opponent this time is even quicker. 42-year-old against a 38-year-old. First leg, Yala it's Chris to throw first. Game on. Before we get too deep into this very quick final for week nine, I've been doing some calculations about their nightly averages. 100 And their nightly percentages. And their 180s. They can barely be split. This 85. genuinely is a very tight final. For the night... Klassen 
Of course, inflated by that 100 average in the semi-finals. But they could be split on their nightly average by 0.22 of a point. That's really tight. And as far as their doubling is concerned, they are split by 1%. 33% for Klaassen. 34% for Landman. They've both hit 11 doubles. I'm trying to find a favourite statistically in this one, and I can't, Scott. No, and if anybody can find a favourite in a statistic, it's you. Six. So, um, yeah, no, it's it, it's been the way that it's gone all evening, and and you can only, like I say, judge on current form. It's going to have to be a special moment. I think there's going to be a special yeah, moment that, that decides this one. That's a special dart. One hundred. Early chance Christian for Landman. Christian required twenty-four. He's got the darts in this final. His first final. 18. He might just be yeah, able to give them away. 20. Game shot. I was just first about though. to say, if he Yana missed Klassen. that, it could be a case of here we go again. But to flip the script a little bit, second leg, it's it might just first. be a repeat of week three in series three. The week... That Yellow Klaassen got his mitts on a 5,000 pound check here for the first time. That monetary reward 100. goes a long way to helping you on your journeys. To the Challenge Tour, to invitations to the Pro Tour. 40. To other events around Europe and the world. I remember a week 100. when Klaassen was in Southampton a year ago. As soon as Saturday night was over, he went straight to the airport and went to Australia. 40. Lives of a full-time dart player. 41. Fifty-eight. This genuinely is one of the games that people love to watch because it's just so quick. It is very quick. 100. Yellow, you require 100. You might have to dig really deep. Because these guys have played a lot of darts this week. Yellow is going to be playing the maximum amount of games without having a nine dart shootout. 29th match Yellow, of the week. Required 24. He is the marathon man for week nine. Game and he's a man the who's 2 0 up. Yellow Visibly classroom. not comfortable still, but winning still. Third leg, yeah, it's Chris, Chris to throw first. Game Chris on. missing that first double, three in his hand. He didn't look comfortable approaching the double, and he didn't look 60. like he was going to hit it after he missed the double 12. The, the sixes were, were a mile away, and when you're playing an opponent as experienced as Yeller, he would have watched that and picked up on that. And that's helped Yeller in the last two legs, that's without doubt. 100. I don't mean to speak about the conditions too much, but in your experience of playing a long format match at Lakeside, does the heat get worse as the game goes on? 140. I don't think the heat gets worse. I think you, you just, you learn to deal with it you, because you acclimatise to it. That's what you do. You acclimatise to it. And it's, uh, 100. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's, it's, you, you, it gets to the point where you stop taking notice of it because the game takes over in your head. And once you can stop 100. thinking about the heat, you don't feel it as much. That's why I said earlier, when we started the show on Sporty Stuff TV from 10 o'clock, you have to accept 134. these conditions. They're not going to change. Because you require 101. Over a short format like this, it's very difficult to forget them. Let's face it, the 69. best way to get over them yeah, is to win quickly. 70. And that's what he did in the semis. Double eight. 54. That was the chance for 3 0. Chris this is 32. Chris's opportunity to get his first leg in the final. And no he score. can't. Yellow, you require 16.
Game oh, shot. That's the a kind though. kiss. Yellow class. He's had some really interesting deflections all week with those big flights. But I can guarantee you he has not had a Full better flight. deflection to throw first. all week long Game than that one. Because now he's got multiple opportunities to serve it out. One and you did see it on the balcony with Abby. That whoever gets a big lead, they like to front run. That's exactly what Klassen's doing. 100. Yeah, I, I, I stuck with Chris because I felt that he would win the first leg with the darts. And he had the opportunity and he didn't do that. 36. But Hatman has a chance to get back in here now with that 180. Being backed up with a 36. And duly punished by Landman. Landman has got five 180s for the night. 96. Guess what? So is Klassen. Another stat that we cannot 60. divide them with. Correct. On an even keel. But they have to be split. 137. In this final, eventually. And it might not be long. Can he save it? He can't. 82. Yellow, you require 52. To win week nine. Game the Cobra shot. strikes. And the match. And he wins. And the Motor Super Series. By four legs to champion. nil. Yellow. Not just in the final. Awesome. But in the semis as well. He goes eight perfect legs to get the title here in week nine. He didn't play as well in the final. In fact, he was pretty much on an even keel with what he's done all night long, but he dispatches the countryman by four legs to nil in what has been a really interesting night. People have backed against him, including myself. Scott went for Landman, I went for Sherrick, but the fact is, it is JK who has found himself dancing with delight here in week nine. In week 13, he will return to be part of a Champions Week that involves a lot of other quick players. The likes of Lauby and Littler will be there, but so is Jella Klaassen, and he is about to get a trophy on the stage with Abby and Scott. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for our presentation. So to present the trophy, would you please welcome to the stage the former Lakeside World Champion, Scotty Dog, Scott Mitchell. Ladies and gentlemen, your Motor Super Series, We9 champion, Yella Klaassen. There we go. Scott, you come in there. And then you just join Scott on. Yella Klaassen, congratulations. You made it eight perfect legs there to get over the line in the semi-finals and then the final. Just sum up how you're feeling. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way I played. I think I played well when I really needed to, and I uh, uh, was a little bit lucky that uh, Chris missed some doubles in the beginning, but I'm uh, happy with my game, so uh, happy with the win. And not the perfect conditions for you, it has to be said. <laughs> no, not at all. I think uh, I'm one of the worst people on stage that I can't deal with, with heat, but to be fair, uh, my hands were wet, but the darts didn't, didn't slip out of my hands, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the way I played, uh, even though it was very hot. And of course, Chris had a few struggles in his semi-finals as well on the doubles. How aware of that were you heading into the final? Uh, I was thinking about it, but he started the game so well, so I thought, okay, he doesn't have any problems anymore, so I have to focus and uh, play well. And I was a little bit lucky that he missed uh, three darts in the first leg because he had the 180 at the right time, I missed the 120, and yeah, he missed, and I took control of the game. And you peaked at just the right time, didn't you, this week? Because we were saying in Group A that maybe you lacked con consistency. You said your focus wasn't always there. But going into Group C, your finishing certainly improved. And then tonight, you've just blown everyone out of the water. Yeah, in, in the, the, the first game, because I knew uh, uh, Lucas Wenig, he lost his first game. So I knew if I won that game, I was already through to the semi. So that... The, the, the game against Felon, uh, there was not, not much pressure because uh, yeah, it didn't matter. I, I never want to lose, but yeah, it didn't matter that much. So in the semifinals and finals, I, I was more focused, and luckily uh, I hit my doubles. 
And how much can this victory help to inspire and encourage you going forward in the back end of 2023? Hopefully a lot. Uh, <laughs> I haven't put in the, the hours that I should have. And uh, uh, yeah, this period is always a more quiet period with tournaments for us. So sometimes it's, it's nice to have a couple of weeks off. But now I have to get ready for the Chiang Sui beginning of August. So slowly I will put in the hours and uh, yeah, this win will certainly help. Absolutely. We wish you the very best of luck. Ladies and gentlemen, one Thank more you. time, your champion, Jelle Klaassen. Thank you. <laughs> Scott, we're just going to have one final word. Jelle Klaassen, you can take your trophy and you can head off. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Scott. Jelle Klaassen, really impressive what he managed to do there, both in the semi-final and the final. I sat up on the balcony. I thought whoever won those first couple of legs would, could run away with it. They do like to be front runners. Yella broke the throw there. Chris, Chris never really looked like hitting that double six. He missed the double 12 in that first leg by, by nothing. But the two at double six, somebody as experienced as Yella would have realized that I've got to jump on this quickly. And that's exactly what he did. And Yella didn't give too much away there, but how much do you think that could help him going into the back end of 2023? Look, I know as a dart player, any win on any stage at anywhere is massive for your confidence. Dart players need confidence more than anything. You can practice for hours and hours and hours, but if you put yourself in this situation and you don't have the confidence, you're not going to win. Absolutely. Right then, Yella Klaassen was our week nine winner. We are going to do this all over again from 9.30 on Monday morning, so make sure you come and join us then.